Kenja is a typical Python framework for generating graphical user interfaces for desktop application. This tutorial will walk you through some of the projects that you can accomplish using Python Kenta. Kenta fundamentals will be covered first from what Kenta is to frames, checkboxes, list boxes, widget, and the GUI. We will be introduced to a variety of libraries including the GTTS library, MoviePy library, Time Module, and Google Trans library. Then, several types of small projects will be covered in detail including how the concept will be implemented. The projects that we will be discussing here are as follow. Language translation. It is essential for good communication between people of different cultures. This project makes it simple to translate the text into other languages. Video to GIF. This course will teach you how to convert any video file to a GIF file, which is a compressed animated image format. Digital clock. In this Python project, we will learn how to create your own digital clock using the Python programming language and a graphical user interface. So let's get started without any further delay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello guys, welcome to the course of Python TK Inter. My name is Gaurav and once again I welcome you to all to great learning. Now, moving to the agenda of Python TK Inter. First, we will see what is GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface that allows user to communicate with computer. After that, we will see Python TK Inter. So Python TK Inter is a GUI library and then we will see widgets. And after knowing widgets, we will see the geometry configuration of widgets. So basically we are having three geometric classes that is place, grid and pack. And then we will see different types of widgets such as label, then we will see button, canvas and many more. And we will see the implementation of each widget in Python TK Inter. So now let's start with GUI. So basically GUI stands for graphical user interface. So in a simpler terms, if I give you the definition, so you can say that it's a desktop application that allows users to interact with the computers. Also the graphical representations are here such as buttons, icons that are included and communication can be accomplished by interconnecting with the icons. Now when I'm talking about icons, so whenever you are opening your computer, you can see that we are having a lot of icons. So that is nothing you are basically interacting with the graphical user interface. So here, now let's see the example of graphical user interface. We are having the example of Microsoft Windows, it is in GUI, we are having Mac OS and many more examples. So now, after understanding graphical user interface, now let's see GUI libraries in Python. So basically Python provides several GUI libraries. So we will be starting with Python TK Inter that we will be seeing on going forward. And we are having several more libraries such as KV, PyQt5, WX Python and PyGUI. So now let's start with Python TK Inter. So what is Python TK Inter? As I already told you that TK Inter is a Python standards GUI library. So when Python is used in conjunction with TK Inter, we are able to create graphical user interface that is quick and simple. Now, TK Inter provides the TK GUI toolkit, a sophisticated object oriented interface. So this is the basic formal definition. Now on moving further, we will understand in a more simpler way. So let's start with TK Inter programming. So now if you want to create a GUI application with TK Inter, there are some steps that you have to follow. The first thing is that you have to import the TK Inter module. And after importing the TK Inter module, you have to create a main window. And inside that main window, we can add multiple widgets. So as I already told you about widgets, that widgets is an element of GUI that displays information. We will see on going further. And at last, the most important point is that you have to enter into the main event loop to perform an action. So let me show you the technical part of this. So when establishing a Python application with GUI, there are two primary approaches that the user has to follow after importing the TK Inter module. So as I already told you that the first step is to import the TK Inter module. So I will write from TK Inter import asterisk. So when I'm writing here asterisk, so that means all the modules will be imported. So the second step, as I already told you that we have to create the main window. So here you can see that I have created the variable whose name is main window and I have assigned here the TK object. So make sure that T will be capital here and we are creating the object here. Next, at last, 
I have to write here main window dot main loop. So here, what does the main loop means? So main loop is nothing but an infinite loop that runs the application, waits for an event, and processes it as soon as the window is open. So in simpler term, I will say that if you are not closing your window, so whatever the widgets that you are putting inside the main window, it will be executed. So now you might have a question: where to put widgets? So the widgets will be put in between the main window and the main loop. So whatever the widgets you want to put it, you can do it. So the widgets should be placed here. So this is the basic idea about the TK Inter programming. So now after getting the basic idea about TK Inter programming, let's see what is widgets and where to place these widgets. So TK Inter offers many controls, and these controls are nothing but known as widgets. So these controls in a GUI applications are buttons, labels, and also can be in the form of text boxes. So there are different types of widgets that are present in TK Inter, such as check button, canvas, frame, entry, button, and label. So now, after understanding widgets, let's see the geometry configuration of widgets. So now, coming to the geometry configuration, these are primarily divided into three types. So these geometry manager classes starts from pack, grid, and place. Now, if I talk about pack, so basically, when you want to place your widget on the top, then we are using pack function. Similarly, for grid. It is used to organize the widget in a table-like structure. When I am telling table-like structure, that means by giving row and column, we can place the particular widget. And at last, we are having place functions. So place function is used to organize the widget at specific positions. Now, if you want to place any widget or if you want to organize any widget at any specific position, so here we will be using a variable x and y. So when I am writing here, let's suppose example x is equal to 10. So that means from the position left to right, I am placing that particular widget. And when I am talking about y, let's suppose if I am giving y value as 50, so that means from top to bottom, my widget will be placed. So we will see it in the practical example. So now, after understanding how to import TK Inter module, how to create a main window, and if you want to run the application, then we have to also implement the main loop. So now, let's see it into the programming. So I will be using PyCharm here. So what I will do now, I will just go on this file. I will click on this new project, and let me give the name here as Python TK Inter. And I will just click it. So you can see that my file has been Open. Now, what I will do here? So here you can see that this is the Python file, right? So now I have to import my module. So by default, when you are installing Python, you will be getting Python TK Inter module at the same time. So I will just write here from TK Inter, and I will just write here import asterisk. So this shows that my TK Inter module has been imported. Now. After this, I have to create the main window. So, how to create a main window? So, I'll just create a variable. I'll just write here window, and I will create here object, which will be TK. Make sure that your T must be capital and K will be small U. So, my main window has been created. Now, if I want to run it, then I have to write here window dot main loop. So as we know that this is an infinite loop, and until and unless you are not closing the window, so whatever the widgets you are adding it, it will display it, right? So now let me execute this. So on execution, you can see that I got this window. Now let me change the name here. So for that, what I will do here? So always remember that whatever the things if you want to update or whatever the widgets you want to add in this, it has to be in between these two, right? When I'm telling these two, that means it should be in between the creating the object and inside the main loop itself. So now, what I will do here, I will just write here window dot title. So this is the function I will be using here, and I will just simply write here, welcome to great learning. So now let me execute this. And on execution, you can see that it's showing "Welcome to Great Learning." Now, if you see the size of this window, that's the GUI application right now we have created here. So, let me fix this size. So, for fixing the size, what I will do here, I will just simply write here "Window dot min size." So, here what I will give, I will just give here width and height. So, let me write here width, and I will assign it. Let's suppose as 100, and height I will write here. 
as 400 and now let me execute this so on execution you can see that this is the minimum size of my window and the maximum size is this and now if I want to set my maximum size so again I will just write a function here window dot max size so let me write here once again window dot max size and this time I will give width as let's suppose 300 and height I will give as 800 so now if I'm executing it so on execution if you see here so on execution you can see that this is the minimum size of my window and now if I am just clicking on this option so you can see that this is my max size right so let me change the width of maximum size so I will just write here let's suppose 500 so that it looks better and now if I'm executing you can see that I'm getting the output like this so now let's start with different types of widgets so the first widget that I'm having is label so label is used to display box in which text or image is added so what's the syntax of label you have to just write here label and in the label function you can see that I've written here master so what do you mean by master master is nothing but it's a main window right we have seen how to create a main window and then after that we'll write comma and then we'll give several options now coming to the options options can be passed as arguments so in options we can write BG command font image width and height when I'm talking about BG that means background so let's suppose if the background color I have given blue so the blue will be the background color there is also one more option known as FG FG stands for foreground color so if I've given the foreground as red so the text will be of red color so after getting a basic idea about this label widget let's implement into the Python TK enter so here you can see that this is my GUI application right now what I will do here I'll just go here and I will create a variable so let me give the variable name as L1 I'll just write here L1 and L1 is equal to label and inside this label what I have to write here I have to write here the main window and we know that our main window is this one right that the TK object that we have created and the variable name is window also so I'll just write here window and let me give you the text so I'll just write here text is equal to let's suppose great learning now if you are executing it you will see that there will not be any updation in the output why because I have to use a geometric configuration of the widgets right so let me execute this so if I'm executing it here you can see that nothing is updated so what I will do here now I will show you the different geometric classes so I'll just write here Elvin dot pack so when I'm writing here pack so the widget will be displayed on the top of the frame so let me just execute this now on execution you can see that so on execution you can see that my widget has been placed on the top right now instead of pack if I'm using here let's suppose grid so let me write here grid so I will just change it from pack to grid so as I told you that grid represent tables tables means we are having rows and columns so I'll just write here row is equal to 0 and column is equal to 1 and now let me execute this and on execution you can see that I'm getting great learning so here you can see that I have used row 0 is equal to column is equal to 1 so right now our program is smaller that's why it's coming on there so when we'll be using a lot of code then we can change the row from 0 to like you can put 5 also you can also change the column also now instead of grid now I will use here place function so place functions if I'm writing let's suppose if you want to insert any widget at any specific position then you can use place function so now I will just change it from grid to place so I'll just write here Elvin dot place and I will just write here X so when I'm writing here X is equal to 5 that means I'm giving the position from left to right and when I'm writing here Y is equal to let's suppose 10 then I'm giving the positions from from top to bottom so if I'm executing it now 
then you can see that this grade learning has been printed here. So that means my x value is from here and y value is from top to bottom. So let me change the value here. So now instead of x is equal to 5, I'm writing 50 and y is equal to 80. Then you can clearly see the difference. So now on execution, you can see that we are getting great learning here, right? So this is a particular position. We are getting great learning. So this is the basic idea about geometrical configuration of the widget. And we have also seen the label widget. So now you have seen the text. Now let me put some color in the background as well as in the foreground. So I'll just write here BG. And I will write here, let's suppose color as blue. So now if I'm executing it, let me execute. So on execution, you can see that I'm getting my background as blue. Now, if I want to change the text color, so how to change? So I will just write here FG, that is foreground. And let me write here red. You can take any color you want. So once again, let me execute this. And you can see that I am getting red color in my text. Now, you can also increase the width and height too. So uh, you can use for that width and height. So I'll just write here width is equal to, let's suppose 50 I will put and then height as 80. So you can see that now my width has been increased as well as height. So now if I want to display the image on GUI, so what I will do here, I will just write, so I will just create another variable. Let's suppose I1 and let me create the variable here. So I'll just write here photo image. So let me write here photo image and inside this photo image, I will just write here file. Let me write here file. And now if you see here, I am having this image, right? So let me go and then click on the properties. I will just copy this location here and I will just paste it. But what's my file name? So here, if you go, you can see that my file name is Python, right? And it's in the PNG format. So I will just write here Python dot PNG. So just let me write here Python dot PNG and here, you can see that these are the backslash, but I have to give the forward slash here. So I will just uh, write here forward slash. And now what I will do here, I'll just remove all these things here. And as you know, that label will contain first the master, right? So master means the main window that you are creating. And then after that, we can write the option. So in the option, I will just write here image and I will write here image is equal to what's my image variable name Ivan. So I'll just write here Ivan and Elvin dot place. You can place also, but I will use here pack. So pack will show me on the top, right? So let me execute this and on execution, you can see that we are getting the TK inter image on my GUI, right? So after knowing label widget, now let's discuss about button widget. So as you can see here, it is used to show or display button in an application, right? So what's the syntax? Again, we are having a very simple syntax that is we have to just write button and then in button function, we have to write master. Master is nothing but the main window and whatever the options you want to pass as your argument. So here we can pass BG that is background. Then we can use command. So I'll just write here command and whatever the function name I want to create, I will just write or you can say assign in the command. Next, we are having font option, image option, width option, as well as height option. So now after having a little bit idea about button, now let's see is the practical implementation. So this is my pie charm and for creating a button, I will just write simply here B1 is equal to, this is my variable and I will just write here button and inside this, I will just write window, which is my master. And then I will just simply write here text is equal to let's suppose I will write here into so I'll just write here simply into and now after this what will happen I have to write here the geometrical configuration so that I can see my widget so I'll just write here b1 dot pack so let me execute this and you can see that this is my button that has been created now so let me add here foreground so I'll just write here foreground let's suppose as pink and then I can also add you background too. So background, let's take it as black or you can take it with green also. 
you can take any color I am taking here black and now if I'm executing it you can see that I'm getting a button which name is enter which is having the text color as pink and background color as black right so this is the basic idea about button let's understand about how to create an entry so what we can do here I will just create another variable even and the syntax will be simple I have to just write here entry and here I will write once again the window and let me give here the width as 10 and now if I'm executing so I can execute but I have to write here the geometrical configuration also so I'll just write here even dot pack and on execution you can see that I got my entry button now in entry button I can write anything so let me write here Gaurav so what will I do now so let me write here BD is equal to let's suppose 6 I'm writing here so when I'm talking about BD so BD is nothing but it is used to represent the size of the border so here I've given the BD is equal to 6 and now if you are executing it so on execution you can see that I'm getting this type of entry right so there has been a change in the entry borders now what will happen here so let me change here the font style also right and then font size also so for that what I will do here right here comma so I'll just write here font and I will just write here is equal to and then let me give here the font style as Calibri so I'll just write here Calibri and the size let's suppose as 18 or let's take it 20 so you can see that on execution if I'm writing here Gaurav then it's in Calibri right and also the size is also 20 so this is the basic idea about entry now what we will do I will make a username and I will give here the entry in the form of values and I want that whatever the value I'm giving as a username it must display when I'm clicking on the button right so let me create it so I will create a button also for this so now what I will do here so now let me create a small GUI application so I'll just once again write here from tk into import asterisk and after that I will create my main window so I'll just write here window is equal to tk and then I will simply write here window dot main loop so as we know that this is our basic structure so I once again I will give here title window dot title and I will simply write here welcome to great learning so now after this what I will do here I will create a label so we know that whatever the visits you want to add we have to do inside this basic structure so let me write here label so I will just write here L1 is equal to label and then inside that I have to write the main window that is window right and then what can I do here let me give the name as text is equal to employee name and then let me give here the color also so the background color I will give here as let's suppose red and then foreground color I can give here as green cool and if I want to see this visit then I have to do the geometric configuration so I will simply write here L1 dot and I can use here pack but let's use here place so for place as we know that we have to write here basically x and y right so that means if I'm writing x is equal to 10 then it's going from left to right and when I'm writing here y is equal to 50 then it's going from top to bottom so let me write here x is equal to 10 and then y is equal to 10 and now if I'm executing it you can see that this label has been created right so now we have already created a label now I will give here the entry box so for entry box I will use the here the entry so what I will do here now I will just write here even and I will write here entry and inside this entry first I have to write here window and then what I can do here I will just write here let's suppose font I want to it in Corbel so I'll just write here Corbel and then let me give the size here so I will give the size as 20 cool and then let me give the width also so I'll just write here width is equal to 10 
and then I will simply write here e1 dot so let me write here place so I will just write here place and here I will just write here simply x is equal to let's suppose 80 and y is equal to 10 right so let me put it inside this now it's good to go okay so if now I'm executing it so on execution you can see that this is my entry box that I'm getting so what I will do now here I will also write here BD so what I will do here I will just write here BD is equal to 5 and now if I'm executing then you will see the changes in entry right it is more designed okay so after creating label and entry let me create button so what I will do here I'll just simply write here b1 is equal to button so inside this once again I have to write master so my master variable is here window and in options what can I give you in options I will just write here text is equal to enter so I'll just write here simply enter so now let me place this button so I will just write here b1 dot place so I will write here now x is equal to 100 and y is equal to 50 and now if I'm executing it so it will execute so on execution you can see that I got here enter button right let me just adjust the size of this width if I'm writing here let's suppose 9 and now if I'm executing right it's look good but let me write here 8 and the size as 18 now you can see that it's looking more interactive right so now what I will do here after creating button uh, let me give here foreground as blue and then background that I will write here BG as green so that it can look more interactive so now if you see here you can see that I am getting enter button right so let me change here the foreground as black so that we can see here so now you can see that it's feasible now what I will do here if I'm writing here let's suppose Gaurav right so if I'm entering it so I want that value to be printed out here so for that what I will do here so I will create one more label here so let me create one more label so I will just go here and let me write here L2 is equal to a label and once again I will just write here window and after window I will write here text is equal to nothing and then I can give here a background and then foreground also so background I will give here as let's suppose uh, pink and foreground I will give you let's suppose black and let me place it so I'll just write here l2 dot place and let me write here x is equal to 80 and then y is equal to 100 I'm just taking by assumption x and y values so on execution you can see that this is a nothing so what I want here whenever I'm writing here Gaurav and I'm clicking on this enter button I want that instead of nothing I want Gaurav value right so what I will do now here so before entry button I will just create a variable let's suppose v is equal to and then I will write here string where so that means we have to deal with the string values now what I will do here uh, an entry button I'll just write here text variable and I will assign it as v so as we know that we have to create a function here so I'll just use here command so when I'm writing here command so this is nothing that means whatever the function you are creating I have to assign the name of the function here so let's suppose I am writing function name here at tech so I'll just write here okay so what I will do now I'll just create a function symbol 
so I'll just write here def at tech and this is my function now inside this function I will just write here let's suppose I want to get the value so for getting the value I have to use the get method so I'll just write here v is my variable right so I'll just simply write here v dot get so now what I will do here let me write here a variable x and I will assign it into this and I want to print the value so I will just write here print x and what I want so let's suppose if I am putting Gaurav name in entry so I want that whatever the label I have created which name was nothing it has to be changed so I have to write first the label name that is l2 dot and then I will write here config and inside this config I will just simply write here text is equal to x and now let me execute this so on execution if I'm writing here let's suppose Gaurav and now if I'm pressing enter you can see that I'm getting here an error because I have to just correct it as config and now if I'm executing it so on execution you can see that once again I'm getting now if I'm writing here Gaurav and pressing on enter you can see that I am getting instead of nothing now as Gaurav now let me change here the foreground as well as background so you can also do it so I'll just write here text is equal to X I'll just write here let's suppose background is equal to uh, let's take the color in yellow and then foreground as blue so on execution you can see that if I'm writing let's take this time if I'm taking the name of Ipsha and if I am putting into then you can see that along with the name of Ipsa the color has been also changed right for FG that is foreground and for background too so this is the basic idea about label entry and then button so after knowing button now let's discuss what is check button so as the name itself suggests check button it is used to show a selection of choices as check boxes right so what's the syntax syntax is again symbol I have to write just check button okay and then inside that I have to just write here master master will be my main window and then option right in option I can pass the arguments such as title BG and active background right so this is the basic idea about check button now let's see how to create a check button so what I will do for creating a check button I will simply write here let's suppose CV1 variable I'll just write here check and then I will write here button so you can see that it's already swing check button and inside this I will write my window and let's suppose if you want to create a check button of let's suppose name as mail so you can just write here mail and you have to write obviously cb one dot pack you can use any geometric configuration like grid you can use you can also use place but I will be using pack so that it will display the widget on the top so if I'm excluding it so on execution you will see that I am getting here on the top this check button right so this is the basic idea about check button so the next visit that we are having is frame so basically frame serves as a container and also it is used to organize the visits so what's the syntax of frame I will write frame and F must be capital and then we have to write the master that is the main window and then we can pass options here also as an argument so we can use here BG BD cursor width and then height right so let's see the practical implementation of frame so I will go to PyCharm and now what I will do I will create a frame so I want to create a frame on top as well as bottom so I will take a variable here t1 for the top one and I will just simply write here frame and I will just write here t1 dot let's take its pack and once again I will create another frame for the bottom one so once again I will write here bm is equal to frame and I will just write here b1 dot pack and now if I'm executing it so on execution you can see that we will get nothing because we don't pass any master neither do we have pass options so what will I do now I'll just create a label so I'll just write here l1 and then I will write here label I will just put here the frame variable that is t1 that is used for the top one and I will just write here text and at top I want great learning so I will just simply write here great learning
and now I will write here l1 dot pack similarly I will create one more label I will write here l2 and this will be for the bottom one so let me write here label and here the variable will be b1 and the text will be simple I will just write this is bottom now if I'm writing here l2 dot pack and now if I'm executing it so on execution you can see that I'm getting great learning and bottom so obviously I want to display this bottom frame on the bottom side right so what I will do here I will just go here and I will just write here side is equal to bottom so it will be in capital letter so make sure that uh, the side you are writing it must be in capital letter so now if I'm executing it so on execution you will see that at top we are getting great learning and in bottom we are getting bottom itself so let me zoom it out so you can see that this is the output so this is the basic idea about frame visit so the next visit that we are having is list box so talking about list box it is used to give a user with a list of options in a simple word it will give you a box in which you can create a list which will contain an item and if you want to remove it we can do it in a list box so let's see the syntax syntax is simple here I am creating a variable whose name is lb1 and here I will write the syntax list box and then master so now coming to the master what will be master here master will be your main window and then we can give options as an argument so here we can give bg bd font image width and height and here l will be capital while this b will be small right so let me implement in the pie charm so for creating a list box what I will do here as I told you that I will create a variable so let me write here lb1 and here I will just write list box so here I will write here list box so L has to be capital and when I'm writing here you can see that I'm also seeing the option of list box here right so let me write it and now I will write here the main window so my main window is here with the variable name of window so I will just write here window and then after that I can give multiple options so let me take the option here as width let me write here width and let me assign the value here 5 so I know that if I want to see my widget then I have to use the geometrical configuration right so I'll just write here dot pack and now if I'm executing it let me just execute this right now what I will do here this list box is empty but I want to insert the element here so what I will do here I will just write here list one so this is a variable that I will create and let me insert some values so let me take the name here so I'll just write first my name Gaurav uh, let's take the another name Edwin and I will write here Ipsa and let's take one more name I'll write here Kirtiga so here you can see that in this list I'm having four name right so now what I will do here I will use here insert function so I'll just create a loop I will write here for I in list one and then I will write here what's my list box name I will write here lb1 because I have to insert these elements in my list box right so I will write here lb1 dot insert and at which position I have to insert I will just write here end and then I have to write here i so I will take all the list values that is in my list one right so now what I have to do let me execute this so once again I am executing so here you can see that we are getting an error why because I have to just remove this geometric configuration so let me just remove this and now I will write you lb1 dot pack so why I have to write after this because I want these all things has to be updated so now if I am just executing it you can see that on execution we are having Gaurav, Advan, Ipsa and Kirtika but let me just change the width size so that it can look better so I'll just write here let's suppose 8 and now let me execute once again and now on execution you can see that we are getting the name so basically these list contains the items right now if I want to remove any items so what can I do here I will just do here simply I will just uh, create a button so for creating a button what we can do I'll just write here let's suppose b1 and 
button so let me write here capital B you can see that we are getting the button option and inside this button first I have to write here master so what's my master this is the main window so I'll just write window and then in button let me write here text so when I'm writing text here so let me write here the values so let's suppose if I want to remove the any value so I will just take here the name as remove uh, so let me execute this so you can see that I'm not getting the button widget here why because I have to use pack so once again I will just write here b1 dot pack so if I'm clicking on this remove button you can see that nothing has been removed right so for that what I have to do here I have to just do one thing I will just create a function so I will be using here command so I will just write here command and in this command I will give the function name so this is also known as command binding so let me give the function name as attack so I'll just write here attack and now what I will do here I'll just create a function here so let me create the function so I'll just write def we know that if you want to create a function first we have to write here def and then I will write here the function name as attack right and then after that I want to remove the values so what I will do here I'll just write my list box so what's my list box variable it is lb1 because I want to remove the element from my list box and then obviously if you want to remove the element that means we want to delete the element so I will be using here delete function and inside this delete function if I'm writing here anchor so when I'm writing here anchor so that means whatever the items I'm selecting from the list it will be deleted one by one so let me execute it now if I'm just clicking on this you can see that so you can see that this is the output let's suppose if I want to remove admin I will just click on this admin and I will click on remove button so you can see that clearly admin has been removed so let's suppose if I want to remove myself then I will just click on my name Gaurav and then I will remove it right so here you can see that in this list box we are having two names that is Ifsha and Kirtika so this is the basic idea about list box so mainly there are two important things in list box insertion and deletion so now after understanding about label entry button check button now let's understand about different types of widgets we are having menu button menu message box radio button scale scroll bar text top level spin box and pan window we'll discuss some of the widgets in the practical implementation so now let's discuss about radio button widget. so uh, for creating radio button widget, let me create the variable but before that uh, let me create one more variable and it will be int where so when I am creating int word that means we are dealing with integer values right now what I will do here uh, for creating a radio button I will just write here r1 and I will write capital R radio button you can see that it's showing so let me write here radio button and again the first thing that we have to write our main window and our main window name is window so I'll just write here window and after that I will just write here text so text is equal to yes I am writing here text is equal to yes and then what I will do here I will just write simply here r1 dot pack so on execution you can see that I am getting here yes as a radio button now let me create one more radio button so I'll just simply write here r2 is equal to radio button and once again I will write here window that is my master here and then in options once again I will write here text and this time I will just write here no so I will just write here no and then I will once again write here r2 dot pack so now if I'm executing it you can see that I am getting two variables here yes or no so here you can see that yes and no radio button has been selected but I want to select one at a time right so for that what I will do here I will just write here value so here I will give the value let's take any value I'll just write here value as 1 so I will write here value is equal to 0 so on execution you can see that this time only one option is selected right so if here I'm clicking yes then you can see that only yes has been selected okay so now I want to print the value so what can I do here you can see that I have already created a variable here v so I will just write here variable is equal to v and here also I will just write here variable 
So now after this, let's suppose if I want to print the yes value. So what I will do here. Uh, so we should create a button. So first I will create a button here. So for button I will write here B1 is equal to button. And I will write here once again window. And I will write here text is equal to enter. Now what I will do here, I have to just write here B1 dot pack. Right. So now if I'm executing here, you can see that this button has been displayed on my GUI. So if I am clicking on this enter button, nothing has been happened. So what I want to do here, let's suppose if I am clicking on yes and then I'm clicking on this enter button. So I want to display the value on the screen. So for that, what we can do, we'll create a function. So for function, what can I do here? I have to simply write inside this button widget command is equal to. So whatever the function name you will be taking, you have to write here in this, right? So you have to assign here. So I'll, I will take the name as at tech once again, and then I will simply write here a function. Let's support depth at tech. And in this function, I will just write here V dot get. So V dot get will help me to get the value and I will just put it inside a print function. And then if I'm executing it, so you can see that if I'm clicking on yes, and then if I am clicking on this enter, you can see that I am getting one value in my output. Similarly, if I am clicking on no and then enter, then you can see that I'm getting the value as zero, right? Here you can see that this is the value here. So this is the basic idea about radio button. So now let's understand about message box visit. So let's take an example. Uh, if I am giving any value in the entry. So let's suppose if we are having any submit button and if we are clicking on that submit button, then message box will display there and whatever the instruction you are giving. Let's suppose if you are giving the instruction, it's an empty, then it will show right or let's suppose the value we have inserted there, then it will show success depending upon us. So now let's implement it and understand it. So first what I will do here, I will just write here once again from TK into import asterisk I will write and for message box I have to import message box so I'll just write here from TK into import message box so my message box has been imported now now what I will do here once again I have to create the main window so I'll just write here window is equal to so I'll just write here window is equal to T K. So this is the object of the main window and I have to write here window dot main loop. Now what I can do here. So if you will execute here, then it will be executed, right? You can also change the title, but we are not discussing in this particular time. So now let's focus. What I will do now, I will just create an entry button. So I'll just write here even is equal to entry. And in this entry button, what I will do, I will just write the main window. And then let me create a variable here. And then I will write here string where. So when I'm writing here string where, that means I will be dealing with the string values. And inside this entry options, what I will write here, I will simply write here text variable. And I will write here S1. So why we are doing this? When I'm writing here text variable is equal to S1. So that means we are passing the value. So now I have to do the geometric configuration of it. So I'll just simply write here even dot pack. Now let me execute this. You can see that entry box has been created. Now let me create the button too. So for button, I will just write here B1 and capital B must be there. And then let me write here once again window and then text I will write here as submit. So we know that in button we can write command and in command what are the function name we want to create we can simply write so I'll just write here at tech. So this will be my function name. Okay and let me create here my function too. So I'll just write here def at tech. And before that I have to write b1 dot pack. And we know that this main loop has to be at last, right? So I'll just replace it at this position. So let's take a condition. But before that, let me display the output here. Stop and rerun. If I'm rerunning it, 
then you can see that it's showing that you have to in okay so let me just hide this function as of now now if I'm executing it so this attack is also not defined so let me hide this too as of now and I will just So if I'm executing it here, so let's suppose if I'm writing here Gaurav. So if I'm clicking on submit option, nothing is working, right? So that's why I'm creating a function here. So let's suppose that if I'm not inserting any value. So I want that it must show empty, right? So that's the message box. And let's suppose if I'm inserting any value, then it has to be so success. So let me implement the message box here. Uh, let me remove this. And this too. So for that I will give a simple condition. First I will write here if and I will write here s1 dot get. So when I'm writing this, so this means I didn't pass any string value. So what I will do here, I'll write here colon and then I will use my message box. So I'll just write here message box dot and then I can use the function. So which function shall I use now? So Python is having a several function and this time I will write here so warning. So when I'm writing here so warning. So you can see that I am having two things here. First one is the title. So I will give in title here cousin. And then I will write here it's empty. And I will also give one more condition. I will write here else. And in else condition, I will once again write here message box. So I'll just write here so info and let me write here successful. And then I will just simply write here. Uh, let's suppose if I want to display the value, whatever the value I've given there. So I'll just write here s1 dot get. So let me implement this now. So if you see this code, I'm running it once again, stop and rerun. And this is my output. So let me zoom it out. And if I'm writing, let's suppose Gaurav here. So on execution, you can see that on title, I'm getting here successful and it's showing my name as Gaurav. Let's suppose that instead of Gaurav, if I'm not writing any value, if I'm not passing any value and now if I'm executing, then it's showing cause and it's sympathy, right? So this is the overall idea about message box. So today into this particular tutorial, we'll be learning about how we can make up a language translator app with the help of Python programming language. Okay, we'll be learning about making up a language translator Python project into this respective video. Okay, so that's the idea regarding this particular tutorial, this particular video, which is actually gonna be about. Now, the very first thing that I'll be taking you through this project is that what are we gonna do up here? So, uh, in a language translator project, we'll be making up a language translator app. So, onto that case, you can write up uh, the language in any of the format. Let's say you want to write up some text into English. So, yeah, you can write up the text into English. And further, according to your choice, you can convert that text into any of the language, whichever you prefer, like. You want to convert into German, you want to convert into French, you want to convert into Spanish. Any language you can convert it onto your own. Okay, so this will be a sort of project which we're making out here. What are the agenda that we are going to follow up into this particular video? So let's move ahead and check that out. So here's the agenda for this respective uh, video. First of all, I'll be introducing you to all of the libraries which we'll be using up into this particular project. I'll be using up three libraries here. The first one is the GTTS library that's called as GTTS library. Second one will be my Tkinter library. And third will be my Google Trans library. These will be the three libraries that I'll be using up into this particular project. So first of all, I'll be taking you to these three libraries that what are these actually, what are they used about, how to use them out, what's the process for installation, which library needs installation, which library doesn't need installation, each and everything will be covering up here. Further, after learning about all of these three libraries, I'll be taking you towards the implementation of the project that's the language translator. 
So that's the agenda which we are going to follow up here into this respective tutorial. Let me take you to the very first topic of ours and that's the GTTS library. Okay, whenever you want to convert text to a speech, you always use out the GTTS library. As the name suggests, G stands for Google, first T stands for text, second T stands for two, and the S stands for speech. That's the Google Text to Speech Library. Okay, first of all, that's the full form of GTTS Library. Okay, it converts the Google Text to Speech using the Google. It's one of the Python libraries which we have up here and preferably that's used for converting of the text to speech only. With the help of the Google, you translate up the text into the speech format. Okay, and how is that done? That's done with the help of the APIs. Okay, so it's one of the Python libraries and CLI tool to interface with Google Translate text to speech API. Okay, it's used for Google Translate text to speech. Whenever you want to translate or convert, whatever you can say, you can say about that. So whenever is the need for converting any text to a speech, preferably in that we use up the GTTS library only. Okay, this is the very first library which is used by because if there is a need for translating up any text to a speech with the help of Google. So that's the most used library which works and yeah, it will be giving you the a uh, clear output as well in the con in the case of the conversion of the text okay now let's say i want to convert up my written up uh, my text of english into french in that case i'm going to use up this gtts library but it's not alone it's like it's not alone one library we have more libraries which can be used and i'll be talking about the second one into this particular video only Okay, so first of all, I hope you got up an idea that what is this GTTS library about, right? Now, what are the features of this particular library? So features is that you can use unlimited length of text. It means that you do not have up a limitation that the text should be of 100 words or 200 words, nothing like that, okay? You can use up any length of the text Okay, you can use up any length of the text for converting that respective text to any other language. Okay, now why into my project I have used up this particular uh, library because it helps you to translate that text with the help of Google. Okay, because uh, in this particular project I don't want to convert my text to a speech. I do not want to do that out because that will be uh, I'll be converting the text to text only. But what's the use? Because it helps you to do the things with the Google translation. And for sure, if I want to convert up any text into any different language, I'll be needing the use of the Google translation. That's the way I did use it out into this particular uh, project. Okay. Hope I'm pretty much clear with this particular thing because might be this particular question must be coming up into your mind that if you do not have to convert the text to a speech then why are you using up this gtts library because i want to translate out my text with the help of google because it's it's not possible for me to write n number of things like uh, in english if it is how are you doing written then what is it said in german what is it said in french what is it said in spanish or whatever is said, uh, said like we, you say that into Hindi. It's not possible for me to write up each and everything into my program. That there has to be some automation in the use of these particular things. Right, so into that particular case, I am simply using up this Google translation. Okay, so hope I'm pretty much clear. So yeah, I just told you um, that you can use any unlimited length of text and even uh, you have a uh, here customizable text. It means that uh, like you want to provide up some pronunciation corrections or all those things that as well works fine. So this is how this GTTS library works about. This is how it is used for and these are the features which you have up here. 
what's the process for installation so yes you need to install this library onto your device for the use so into that particular case the command is pip install gtts okay further i'll be showing you as well the practical that how do you install up these libraries onto your respective ides or onto your command prompts okay but make sure to do out one thing here that the g will be small and t t and s these three characters will be into the capital letters only make sure to do out this particular thing otherwise if you are not doing it will show you some sort of error that the library doesn't exist or or name is wrong written something like that okay so if you are installing onto your own to do out this particular thing write up g in the small and double t s will be into the caps okay hope i am pretty much clear with this gtts library that what is it why are we using this into our project and what's the use of what are the features of this particular library and how to install that out right now let me take you to the next library that's the last one for the project of our language translator at last we are having up the google trans library so what this library is actually about now this is the library which helps you to google translate out the things okay this is the one which helps you in the translation with the help of google okay i want to translate up the text that was the reason previously i used gtts that will translate up the text now from this google trans i'll be using up that text to be translated about okay so yes this is one of the free and unlimited python library that implemented google translate api it uses up the api for the translation of your text okay so text will be taking up from gtts library and google trans will help you to translate that text okay hope i am pretty much clear so uh, this perspective now there is one simple thing that um, google trans library is compatible like you can use a google trans library if you are having python version 3.6 or above okay so make sure that if you are not having the python version 3.6 or above and i would recommend you that have 3.6 above only so into that perspective case if you do not have the version 3.6 above so once uninstall your python or you could uh, simply upgrade your python version as well whatever is preferable please do that out because it's google trans only and only works upon the python 3.6 above version okay great what are the features of the google trans library so it actually is a uh, the library works in a faster manner and it uses up the server that is translate.google.com okay this is a server which is used in this particular library now this google trans library is actually having up a feature of the auto language detection it means that it can automatically detect up the language that what sort of language is written up let's say i am not going to declare that i am going to put up my text into english language only i am not going to do that out okay in the further video when i would show you the practical implementation of the uh, project into that case you will be noticing that at none of the places i mentioned that i'll be writing up my text into english then how come it is able to detect that from english i have converted into different language that thing will be done with the help of google trans library so actually it is having up a feature like it can detect up any language accordingly auto language detection feature is there in the google trans library okay whenever you want to do the bulk translations whenever you want to do a lot of translations at one time this library is as well used about okay it is a, as well having up a customizable service url and even it is having http support okay so these are the features which you have appear into the google trans library and that will be using up into our project as well okay installation is again simple you could use pip install google trans and it will be installed out for you i'll be showing you out that on to the 
uh, IDE that I'll be using about. I'll be showing you the practical implementation for the installations as well. Okay. So, hope I am pretty much clear with this Google Trans Library as well. That what is it about? What is it used for? What are the features? And even about the installation. Now, next we are having out the demo for our Python project. That's our language translator. So from this particular place, I'll be taking you to my IDE and that's my PyCharm IDE. You can use any IDE of your choice. Let's say Visual Studio Code, Jupyter Notebook, Sublime, Spider, PyCharm, whatever you prefer, like you can use about, but not the online IDEs, only use the offline IDEs. Okay. Now let me take you further onto my PyCharm ID and let's first of all see the installation process. Further, we'll be writing out our project for the language translator. So here I am onto my PyCharm IDE and let's first of all see the installation. Further, I'll be demonstrating you the importing and the rest of the things of the libraries. Okay, so let me go onto the terminal here. Great. You can use the command prompt or whatever you prefer like for the installation process. Okay. So my very first command for the installation is I'll be installing the GTTS. So pip install GTTS. I would zoom in and you can have a clear look. This is my command which you have to write up here once again. That's my command. Okay. You have to write up pip. Then you have to write up here install and further you have to write up here GTTS. G will be small and TTS will be in the cap. Hit out enter. It will install up this particular library for you in some time. But for me, I did already install out this library. So it's showing me that the requirement is already satisfied. But for you, if you haven't downloaded it, this up till now, so it will take up some time in the installation and further it will show you that successfully installed. Okay. I could do one more thing. I could write up the same command here as well. Once I could put that out. I could put up right and like this. My first command is pip install and gtts. Okay, that's my first command. Now, further, what do I need? I need to install up my second library. Okay, so tkinter doesn't need any installation, so that's pretty fine. I'll be installing up my Google Trans. Again, the command is same pip install and you're going to write Google T R A N S. Yes, okay, T R A N S. Hit out enter. This is how your Google Trans library will be installed. In Google Trans, you do not need out any capitals or anything like that. Let me highlight that. This is the command. Okay, go pip install Google Trans. For me, this is as well already installed so it is showing me requirement already satisfied but if you haven't installed that up till now so for you it will show that installing and at last it will show in the successfully installed okay google and here goes your trans and let me close out this right here Kinta doesn't need installation that i had already mentioned you about so these are the two commands you can use the you write them onto your you can use them onto the command prompt or you are using Jupyter Notebook, whatever you are comfortable with. Okay, installation. Now I'll be taking you to a new notebook and into that notebook we'll be learning about the practical implementation of our project for the language translator. Okay, so um, here I am onto my PyCharm ID and uh, for this I'll be writing up all of my codes onto the suspective IDE only. Okay, before moving forward with any of the things, uh, let me quickly tell you about this particular IDE that what is it actually and uh, how to be used this out. So this is one of our offline IDEs where you write up the Python program to use up the Python programming language for making up your um, projects and even for writing up your codes. Okay, now um i would refer you that you can use any of the respective ides according to your choice you want to use visual studio code yes you can you want to use jupyter notebook so yes you can if you want to use pycharm you want to use sublime whatever you just want to use you can use that out but one exception is there that do not use the online ides okay 
because now this is a GUI project. That's the graphical user interface. It's a that sort of project. Okay. Now, uh, the library which we'll be using up here that is take into. So that take into library, uh, you can't use that out onto the any of the online IDEs. Okay, you can use that out uh, into the offline IDEs only. Okay, so I recommend you to use any of the offline IDEs according to your choice, according to your easiness. Okay, so I'll be using a PyCharm throughout this respective uh, video for uh, making up my project. Okay. So let's get started with making up of our language translator. Okay. Uh, the libraries which will be used, I did already give you the idea regarding all the three libraries that are used up into this particular project. The GTTS, the Tkinter and the Google Trans. All three I gave you the overview that what are these library about and what do these libraries actually do. Okay. So further now I'll be moving up and I'll be start installing up the libraries for me and I'll be writing up the respective codes for me okay so first of all my libraries which I'm having I'll be importing them out so for the very first I'll be importing up my tkinter library from tkinter import asterisk okay now what does this line actually means this lines means that from my tkinter library Okay, from a tkinter library, I am importing up all of the functions which I am having up into this particular library. Now, why I am actually importing up all the functions? Uh, see, because uh, it can be the case that at some point I could put up the buttons, at some point I would need up a box, or let's say at some time I need, I need up the drop down menu, the things like that. Okay. So individually uh, importing all of these functions, it's not a tedious task, but yeah, it's going to take up some time for you to import all of these functions individually, right? So as to avoid up that particular thing, I am simply importing up all of the functions from my tkinter library. So that's from tkinter import asterisk. Okay, hope I'm pretty much clear with this. Now next, next I'm going to import up. Uh, from Google Trans, for from Google Trans, I'm gonna import up the translator. Translator. Now, what is this about? Google Trans is yet another library for, with which we help. Uh, like it is a sort of a library. Uh, with the help of Google, we use to translate out our languages into different languages. Right, so this Google Trans is all about that. And from that, I imported up a respective function that's my translator. Because what project I am making, I am making up a language translator, right? So into that, I will be needing up a, that function which will help me to translate one language into another. So if you want to do so, into that case, translator is the function which allows you, which helps you to translate one language onto the other language. Let's say I want to translate English to German or English to French or English to Hindi or Hindi to English, any sort of things like that. So translator is the function which will help me to do so. And this translator is a function which comes under the Google Trans library. Okay, so hope you got the idea that why from the Google Trans I imported up the translator. Okay, next my third library goes from GTTS. Okay, from GTTS you have to import GTT uh, capital S. Okay, so this GTTS is as well the uh, uh, Google Trans library. It is as well a sort of library which will be helping you to translate up your language into different different types of languages. Okay, so that's the complete and even that's the clear idea regarding all of the three libraries which I'm using up here. Okay, now what will be the layout of my uh, project? What will be the layout of my program? So what we'll be doing is that we'll be giving up the dimensions. I just want it in a rectangular manner. So I'll be giving up some dimensions according to that. Like my length will be 
somewhat uh, larger and my height would be somewhat smaller okay so i want to pin a rectangular shape so i'll be giving up the dimensions accordingly further at one side it will be written that from which language you want to convert into which language so uh, let's see on the left hand side it would be written that i want to convert from english on to the right hand side you will be having up a drop down menu under that drop down menu menu as soon as you click you will be having many options of different different languages into which you want to convert your written text okay then then you'll be having up a space for writing that what text you want to convert so into that whatever the text you want to convert you have to write that down and in the center of that rectangle i'll be having up a box and that box will actually uh, into that respective box my converted language will be displayed let's say i want to convert english to hindi okay so when i wrote that i want to convert this sentence let's say how are you okay i want to convert this sentence how are you of english into hindi so in the center i'll be having up a box and into that box only my translated my converted sentence will be shown and that's so into my hindi language okay that's the idea of my language translator program okay now further into this perspective accordingly you could put up some background colors accordingly you could give different different sort of colors so as to make it look more uh, feasible okay so i'll be letting you know those as well in the respective video only pretty fine let me just get forward here and now the very first thing that you always have to do whenever you are using of the tik inter library is that you have to make up a window of that tik inter library okay so i'll be giving up the variable tk and the score window again the variable you could give according to your choice whatever you want now if you're using up the tk inter library so into that the output which you will be able to see a new window will open for you and into that respective window you will be able to see your final output okay that is why it's our duty first of all to make up that respective window into which you will be able to see your output okay so tk underscore window is equal to, i'll be writing up tk like this this is what is actually my tk inter window with the help of this respective line i am making up my tk inter window okay further getting down here i'll be setting up a geometry so i'll be writing up tk underscore window because tk underscore window is the variable into which i had made my tk inter window right so for rest of my program at each and every place if i want to insert something if i want to put some color if i want to give some dimensions if i want to put up any button or if i want to put up any box anything like that i will be using up this tk underscore window variable okay for the rest of my complete program so tk underscore window and here i'll be having up the geometry function so geometry okay and into the bracket i'll be setting up the geometry let's say it's so 600 cross 300 now one very important thing to mention up here where many many people actually made the mistakes and finally they are not able to figure out the error which they are making so it's not that multiplication sign okay it's the character which is x a small x alphabet okay that is it which we had put it up here so make sure not to put up the multiplication sign put up this x here okay now if you just want to give up any background color to your tk inter window which is gonna appear so yes you could do so as well let me tell you how so it's tk underscore window dot it will be config um yes config a to the bracket write up bg bg is referring to your background okay and what background color you want to give let's say i want to give a tear as light pink so i did mention that out now whenever you are using up the tk inter library 
let's say whatever the things you did want to write you wrote up everything now further you want to finish up your program let's say okay now it is a tk interlibrary it's very 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 much necessary for you to put up a function which is main loop at the last let me to show you how so tk underscore window dot main loop what this main loop does it actually uh, a sort of it gives the indication that yes at this particular place your complete program has been completed now when you run up your program you will be able to see your final output and if you are not using up the main loop function so into that respective case you won't be able to see any of the output of your program either you are getting the error or you are not getting the error if your program is completely error free then also if you haven't mentioned up this main loop function at the last of your program you won't be able to see your final output okay so make sure and this respective line has to be written at the very last of your program okay so yes this is what it is appearing now let me show you that how the tk into window actually looks like and then further we'll be moving forward with the rest of our things okay so yes this is how my tk into window actually looks like pretty fine so this is how my tk into live window actually looks like so this is a light pink color which we did gave up and tk is already mentioned up here that's my tk into window okay i'll be now i haven't mentioned up anything inside that so nothing is coming up here simply my screen is coming okay it is of the dimension 600 cross 300 okay i would just now stop running this out now uh fine done this is all sorted now what is my next task that i have to do my next task is that i have to put up uh the boxes here the entry boxes uh the buttons for translating the language and all those things i have to put it up here okay so let me just get down from this particular place and let's start writing up all of those respective things okay so first of all what i'll be making i'll be making up an entry window okay so my variable goes entry underscore window entry window means that into which you will be able to write what is the text which you want to convert okay so into that i'll be using up the function which is entry function okay i'll be using up the entry function because this is the function which allows you to make up the entry window into which you will be able to type or write anything okay into the bracket i'll be writing up first of all tk underscore window variable into which i have made up my tk into window okay comma what will be the background of the entry box so bg i want to be in let's say bg i want to be the in the black color okay and what about my ft ft is my font color okay you you can say it as foreground or fg is my font color as well okay font color i want to be the white so my background will be black and my font color will be the white okay further what will be the font size for you so font size i will be just defining those about let's say my first of all the writing of my font will be arial the size i want it to be 16 let's say and i want the writing to be in bold okay um let me do out one thing yes okay so my font will be the arial the respective size for my font will be 16 and i want my font to be in the bold handwriting so this is what i did now here you could give any any of the respective fonts according to your choice okay no issues in that case that's done now what i would do is that i would simply give up here uh the dimension where this entry window has to be placed about okay this entry box has to be placed about so entry underscore window window okay dot and here i have the function which is place now place is a function which allows you to give up the x and y dimensions x and y values 
to place up any of your respective thing. Okay. Let's see now into this particular case. I want to place up my entry box. Okay. So onto that particular case, this respective function, that is the place, which will help me to allow and it will help me to put up the entry box onto a respective place. So pack and here my letter dimensions are 20. Um, uh, and let's say I want to be it is 60. Okay, 60. Fine. Pretty fine. That's done. Now, if I run out my program here for a quick. So, see, here you are able to see up this entry box. And yes, you could write up anything onto this respective one. Okay. Done. I would just close this out now. Okay. Fine. And um, is Y value, I could take it as 40. That would be, I guess, more feasible. Let me just check it out once. Yes, it's, it's a little bit upper only and then that's working. Fine. Um, okay. Fine, that's done. Entry window has been made up. Now, next, what do I have to make? I have to make up that uh, drop down menu. Okay, with that drop down menu, we'll be having different, different um, sort of uh, languages which I want, right? Onto which I want to convert up my text. So, drop down. Okay, dr drop underscore drop down. That's my variable name. Into that, first of all, I just want to write up here that what sort of things will be giving. So, that will be all of all will be my string var, right? So, a string. Bar, that whatever the the like names will be there into this drop down menu all will be belonging to the string into this particular case okay great now further what do i have to do i will simply once again use up this drop underscore down variable which we did me drop underscore down i'll be putting up a dot and i'll be using up the set function now, what has to be set up here? Like that drop down, which is going to come up in the very starting. What do you want to write? I want to give it a text in such a way that it will be uh, select. Uh, I, or I could just try choose language. But select would be more um, like good. Okay, select lang. Uh, like this right this is the drop down menu which I just wanted to write up here and this is the respective text which I wanted to be displayed up okay now what I'll be doing is that I'll be giving it up the dimensions and setting up the uh, background color setting up the foreground color the size everything I'll be doing up here okay so how to do that out Okay, drop underscore down was a variable which is actually already made it out. Um, now what I could do is that I could simply make a one more variable. Okay, so okay, list underscore lang. Okay, my variable name, language list. Okay, so into this I could give up the function which is option menu. My respective function which will help me to make up the drop down menu and into that you'll be having up different different options of different different languages into which you want to translate your text. Okay, so option menu is a function which will help you to do so. So option menu into this I'll be first of all writing up my variable into which my tk into window is to you. So tk underscore window, right? Next, what's my option? So that will be my drop down uh, the respective variable which we did make to so drop underscore down. Okay. And what do I have? I actually have to make up a variable. Uh, okay, for right now, I'll be making up an empty list. Uh, that will be lang underscore choose. Lang underscore options. Okay. And I'll be making up an empty list right now. I'll be afterwards filling that out. Okay. And this perspective I'll be putting up here. So, uh, lang underscore option. Fine. So that's pretty much done, I guess. I just did out. Further, I, I will have to give up some configurations about my background, about my foreground, about my font and everything. Okay. So, now what I'll be doing is that I'll be getting up here. I'll be writing list underscore language my variable 
but I'll be using up the configure function. Okay, now into the bracket, I'll be using up the BG color. So my background color, I want it to be, um, let's, let's want it to be yellow. Okay. Okay, I have to put up the double quotes and let me just get up some space here. Yeah. Yellow will work. And then after that, I just want the uh, FG color. That's my foreground and my uh, font color. I want that to be into the black. Okay, what will be the font, font size and everything? So I want my font equal to that will be Arial. Rather than I want the size to be in the 16. And even I want all the languages to be in the bold. Okay, this was all which I wanted. So I'll note that down. Further, I have to give up the uh, dimensions that we have to like put that out. So list underscore language variable dot here will be my function. This is place, which will help me to give, give up some X and Y dimensions, X and Y values. So X will be equal to the 400. And let's say my y is equal to 4. Okay. So, this is something which I did give up here. This is something which is simply mentioned by me at this particular place. That's my option menu, my drop down menu. Okay. Now, next, what are you making up? I'll be making up the second label. Okay. And now, I'll be making up some uh, few labels here. And those respective labels will help me to display up my translated text and all those particular things. Okay, let's make those put things out. So I'll be writing up um one underscore label. Okay, my variable name. So that so will be equal to here as I'll be using up the label function. Now, whenever you want to write up something onto the tick enter window. You always use up this label function. Okay, whenever you want to write up anything, you always use up this label function. So into this, I'll be writing up tk underscore window. Okay, tk underscore window. Mama, what about my text? So I want my text, um, okay, I want my text to be uh, like this something. Okay, that will be six right here. Now, uh, okay, I am simply giving up the spaces here. Nothing more than that. Okay, fine. Now, what about my background color? So, my background color, I want up to be for this label as, let's say, black only. Okay, comma. And what about my FG color? FG would be white only, let's say. Okay, putting up a comma, getting down. Let me just get down here. Again, displaying up my font values. So font values, I'll be writing up into the form like here I have the Arial. Size I would be increasing up now, let's say 42. And I'll be writing that up into the bold language. Okay. Getting down and placing this one underscore label. So one underscore label dot place function will come up here. And now I have to give up the value. So value for X will be 0. And the value for the Y will be 100 and 20. Okay, let's say these are my values which I want to give. Fine. This one is made. Now, second, I will be uh, simply uh, making, okay, first of all, I will be writing up a translated text. I'll be having up a text place. And into that place, it will be showing translated text. So, after that translate text, I'll be having up a button of translating. So, as soon as I click on that respective button for translating, what will happen? At the place where it is written translated text, my real translated text will come up there and show us as an output. Okay, this is what is going to happen about. So here I'll be writing up a two underscore label. That's equal to I'll be writing up the label function here. Okay, inside that I'll be giving up the tk enter window. So tk underscore window. Okay. Comma, what's my text which I want to mention up here? So, text I want it to be in the form in the translated, um, translated language. Let's say this is the thing which I want it to be, okay? Comma, now what about my background color? 
so i want my this i want now this background color of mine to be in the white color okay and what about the ft color that's my font color and this time i want it to be in the red what about the um, font values so font will be equal to here as like arial okay then we'll be having the size again 42 and then here i am having a bold this is the font size which i want okay further getting down i will be wanting up to underscore label dot here i'm having up the place function that we have to place that out okay so value for the x will be 180 and value for the y will be 140 okay value for x will be 180 and y will be 140 okay that's pretty much done now next what do i want one second let me get down right here now i'll be making up a button so that will be a button which will onto which it will written translate that will be written onto that particular button as soon as i click onto the button it will show me the translated tricks okay so here i'll be making that out so translate underscore b okay my variable name function which i'll be using for making up a button is this button function only but b will be capital for this okay further i'll be writing up the tick inter window into mid into which my tick inter window is stored next what is the text which you want to write up onto that button so i want to write up onto that button um, somewhat in the way let's say translate okay further what will be the background color for that button so background color i want it to be into a manner let's say it would be green okay and what about my fg fg i will be keeping this as white okay and about the font so yeah font will again be somewhat the same values only only a little change will be there font is equal to um first of all, it will be the my arial okay let's say it will be 26 the font size and it will be in the bold as well okay now further after this what i'll be doing is that i will be having up an option um for simply giving up the command as well okay i have to give up the command here as well so what i would do i'll put up a comma and here goes my command function now into this command what i will be giving i will be simply giving up the values i'll be simply giving up my command function at this particular place so for that i have to define up a new function and into that respective function i'll be writing up the main command of my complete program okay so first i'll be going above and defining up that command function so let's say i'll be coming up somewhat at this particular place one second right here and i'll be writing div and let's say it will be um translate translate underscore language my function name and simply i would be writing up here as pass for now okay and inside this i'll be passing up the same function translate underscore language but make sure one thing that you do not put up the brackets after this translate fu language function okay after this particular function you do not put up the brackets because that's not at all needed right so hope i am pretty much clear up to this particular place whatever i did wrote up now further we'll be defining up the functions giving up the choices and rest everything now we'll be doing about okay okay so now further i'll be giving up first of all i'll be filling up this lang underscore or function then i'll be moving up forward with the rest of my things okay so now into this particular case what i'll be doing is that i'll be giving up different different languages now i'll be giving up those respective languages in okay i'm sorry i have to put up equal to right now i'll be giving up the languages in such a way as i want want them to appear into my drop down menu okay we want that to be appearing in the one by one format so that is the reason i'll be giving up all of the languages in the one 
by one format let's say i would just put up here let's say it's hindi okay comma let's say it's english comma let's say i am having a spanish okay let me put that double inverted commas spanish okay um then let's say i'm having a german let's say then i'm having a uh, french okay let's say i'm having this f r e n c h where is that f gone great okay let's say these are the only languages in which i just want up, uh, wanted up the conversions further according to your choice you could add in number of languages whichever you prefer like okay that's done now let's do it one quick thing let's run out our program up till this particular place and let's see what's gonna happen and like what sort of uh, output we are getting up here okay so translated language is too big this is my button i guess so uh, yeah this was my translated language or some button and this is okay pretty fine so select languages option is for let's say i was like french yeah this is coming it's pretty fine okay translated language is to be changed upon because the dimensions actually have to be changed right i would just close this out about um okay what did i give here did i give any button value i guess i didn't give yes that was the mistake let's give out a button value here let's write up here in the form button what was the variable name it was translate underscore b okay so it is translate underscore b dot here will be having up the place function okay now where do i have to place it about so um, i want to place it at let's say 220 x will be 220 and uh, let's say y value will be here again let's say same 220 okay um yes that's pretty much done i guess it uh, let this be in the 25 command is done this is done this is done okay let's run that out now let's check it about okay this is my button i'm my translate button which is coming up and this translated language has to be a little bit more above um okay pretty fine that works let, let's make that a little bit more above so what i could do is that simply i could just give up the different sort of values okay let's do that afterwards first of all let me define up the complete function then we can do up that respective thing afterwards okay let's first of all define up the complete function of ours right so now this uh, language underscore option i just filled up all of those uh, like languages and those are completely coming up correctly into the drop down menu right now what do i have to do is that i have to make up this particular function okay that is translate underscore language okay now into this i'll be writing up let's say o1 right okay let, let that not be let it be n1 my variable name okay and you remember i made up an entry box right that was entry underscore window so i'll be using up that same entry underscore window uh, variable dot get what it will help me to do it will help me to get up uh, get the uh, like whatever the text i have written onto the entry box whatever the entry box we did made and whatever the text i have written it will help me to get up that perspective up here it will help me to get up that perspective box here okay now that's the particular um thing which is coming out okay so that is the reason we use of this get function here let me now just get down at this particular place and i could use n2 my next variable and into that i'll be using up my translator uh, function which we did actually import it out from my google trans library remember the very the, the second line which we wrote out of, of our program was from google trans import translator so now this is the thing which we didn't import out that from a google trans library i am importing up the translator okay let me just get down here further i'm having n3 as my variable and into that now i'll be having up um a respective uh, function and that respective will help me to get up the value so we did made up that downside remember i just made this drop and this code down but i'll be using that up to this particular place so it will be 
drop underscore down dot and it will be again my get because drop down whatever is saved up into the drop down uh, function i will be wanting up that so that uh, in whichever the language we want to convert about dot get okay now in after this now if my if my drop down uh, list which is being selected if my n3 okay if the uh, drop down one which i have selected if that is first of all i did wrote up what did i wrote oh, okay first was in hindi okay if this is equal equal to hindi then in that case what do you have to do you have to write up here a variable let's say it's cvt okay and uh, not cvt let that be change okay so now we have to change it into change is equal to h i you remember that these are the diff short forms which you have for different different languages okay you can go onto the google and there you could get up the different different abbreviations for the languages that you have to use about okay in hindi is done now lf lf my next condition goes lf entry like whatever the language which is chosen by the drop down menu now if that language is english if that language is english so into the in the that case what do you have to do you have to write change now change will equal to en right en is abbreviation for english so it again goes lf what's my next language uh, hindi english spanish now if entry is equal equal to spanish okay then into that case what will be the change so change will be equal to es es is for the spanish okay next again your condition goes after spanish what do we have we have german then we have french now if entry is equal equal to german okay if entry is equal equal to german so into that case so change will equal be to it will be d e this is the abbreviation for german and here my last condition lf n3 is equal equal to and this time it is french right yeah so my change will be equal to uh let's say fr okay so you will be you can get up these abbreviations onto google and you can just simply use that out now i simply i did use up only five languages here so i wrote that out only for five languages the number of languages you are writing for that number of languages you will be putting up different different conditions okay great now here we'll be having up a function a variable that is text and is score translate now that so will be equal to now right you remember above we just made up uh, n2 n2 what was it having it was having my translator function Right, so I'll be now calling that out. So here goes my n2 dot. Here we have the translate n2 dot translate. Now, what do you want to translate out? Actually, I want to translate up this respective. Okay, whatever the n1 we did give up here. I want to one second. I want to translate that out. First of all, I'm writing up here n1 comma. what will be the destination of the translation so destination will be the change variable which we did actually have made up here this one okay this is done and now getting down i'll be writing up here again uh it will be text underscore translate is equal to and again it will be here text underscore translate dot and this time it will be my text okay dot text so what are the text you are having that respective one would be actually changed out here right now further getting down now what do i have i'll be making up one more function let's say that one more variable let's say that's n4 what will be that about into this i'll be using up my gtts library okay what is my text actually so my text is my tra text underscore translate function variable right text underscore translate variable comma and now here i'm going to use up the function which is slow okay so for slow i'm going to do it as set it as false for now and what is my language 
so my language is you change okay this respective one that is my change and getting down here you remember we just made up two labels right you made up two labels this label i'm talking about now um okay this two label one second this one label and this two label let me do out one simple thing okay let me do it one simple thing this one label and this two label these two are i have written up here differently right let me just give them a similar one okay i'll be making this as a uh, two underscore label and this as well i'll be making it up as two underscore label and now here what i'm going to do is that getting language is equal to change okay now getting down at this particular place i'll be using up that or uh, yes two underscore label two underscore label dot here we have the config okay and now what's the text into that so my text will be my text underscore translate okay my text underscore translate will be my a real text okay so now what i have to do i have to copy this out control c and i'll be putting this out just below the respective function here so just below this i'll be putting it about and I'll be removing this out from here. Okay, like this. And yeah, my tick enter window is all actually already made it out. Right, so translate underscore language was a function I did already give up here as in that command. Right, that's pretty much done. Now, what do I have to do? I have to simply do up one single thing that I have to make up the uh, things in a clear way, right? That I have to give up the things in a clear way. So, what I could do is that. I could do up a one thing. Um, yeah, here what I could do, uh, whatever the values I have given, it is white and red, and this as well I could give it as white, w h i t e white, and this as well I could set it up here as in the red. Okay, like it was the coming up a different different line. Remember, so I could get uh, give up the similar values to these respective positions. And now what if I run out my program now? So let's see that what's going to come up as an output. Okay, this translated language is quite a uh, large which is written up. Let me reduce up the, yeah, let's reduce up the size for this because yeah, it's coming too, too, too much uh, bigger as uh, coming up there, right? So I could do a one single thing. I could give this value as a 40. Translated language, yeah, that's pretty much done. 180 comma 1, uh, yeah. It's 180 comma 140. That's done. Um, yes, we could give up these respective values, but instead of that, if what if I give 30? I guess that would somewhat um work. Let's see that out. So I could run it out here. Um, yeah, translated language. Now it's looking a pretty fine thing. Now here I have to write up what I want to translate it out here. I could just increase up the size like this. Yeah. Let's say I want to write up that. How are you? Okay, this is my term which I want to like, this is the thing which I actually want to translate. In which language I want to, I want to do it in the Hindi, let's say. And if I click on the translate button. Okay, we are having a exception. Let's read that out here. So, error, uh, get data info, fin, correction error. Okay, let me do out one simple thing. Um, so, 20, line 75, 75, 85, 12, line number 12. Okay, let's take that out. So right here above, we are having, up, uh, okay, change is equal to HRM. That's pretty much done. Okay, so um, now let's check out the final output of our program for the language translator, okay? Um, but before moving forward uh, with the checking of my program, I just want to make up a quick correction into my program. And that's, I just want to make up this entry window. Like we had given up the font size here as 16, right? um i just want to change out that and make it a little larger because um in in between of the project when we just like actually we when we just ran out of program so into that case i hope that you have noticed that um on a uh, left hand side corner we were having up our entry box of the black color right and it was pretty looking uh small so let's do it one thing let's change up that out let me write up the size for my um entry box as 20 i guess this would actually work out here okay now let's run out our program let's check out the final output then further i'll be giving you uh once a recap that what we did in this particular project okay
so let me run that out very quickly here so yes here we click on the run um great so yeah it would take up a quite a little time because okay one more thing that it's necessary for you to be connected to the internet for running out your particular program okay pretty fine so yes here's my uh, final output here this is my entry box is black color okay i'm gonna write up here let's say that how are okay how are you okay let's see my text which i want to convert in some other different language okay uh, from here i could just click on the drop down menu and here we have different different languages for which i could select out that uh, for which respective language you want to translate out the text let's say i want to do it for hindi okay i click on that simply i can click on the translate and where it is written translated language see here i cut up my output that's up kaise hain that's the conversion of how are you uh, that's in english in hindi right now let's say i want to convert this how are you that same thing on to let's say german okay i clicked on german and i click on translate see at that respective place only my text got changed right so that was the reason actually at every time you remember i used to write up here uh end one second let me get above you uh not that place yes this respective place uh i i used to write up here somewhat like this uh somewhat like false and all those respective things right so that is the reason that i was writing about all of those particular things so that again and again it's i do not have any of the need for running about my project if i go up here and now if i just erase that out and i'm just let's say i write i am going good okay and i want to convert that into hindi let's say and i'm going to click on translate so into that perspective ki see it translated my english text i am doing good into hindi that's me acha kar raha hu right so on to that perspective case you do not need to again close your app and again open out your language translator app if i click on let's say french and i click on translate so yeah here that's the third term which is i'm doing good into the french language right so i'm going to close out the output from here okay now what are the changes that you could make up onto this particular project according to you so you could add some more languages like i did add up only five languages you could add any n number of languages according to your choice for the um you could change the dimensions you could change the color of this respective things and yes you could just change up all of these respective things right according to your choice whatever is actually needed about so what we did into this particular project is that we imported out our libraries tkinter google trans and gtts right these were the three libraries further i did wrote up here translate underscore language and that was the respective function which we did made out for translating out our text that is written to english in any other different language all of the things were done up here here we made up our tkinter window the dimension is given up here here goes my background color further now what are the requirements i wanted up here i wanted up an entry box further i wanted up a drop down list where i'll be having an option for selecting any language in which i want to convert then i wanted up a space where my final output will be displayed and further i wanted up a button so uh, a translate button so as soon as i click on to that respective button my final output should come up there Right, these are these were all of my requirements which are actually wanted up. So, onto that particular case, this was the output which we actually get out here. Right after writing up this complete program, that was our final project which is actually uh, here for us. Right, so I hope that you are pretty much clear with this particular project. Hope you got up the idea as well that how to implement out and how to make up a language translator app. with the python programming language as i have used up the tk inter library so it, it automatically becomes a pan app right here okay so hope i'm pretty much clear with all of these respective things so now let's take a quick summary of whatever the theoretical th things we have actually learned about let's take up a quick summary of all of those respective things so let me start out from here so first we will be learning about the time module now 
um whenever you want to do up any task or whenever you want to deal up with any function or task which is related to the time okay that's related to time so now into that perspective uh, please we use this time module now that's one of the modules means you do not need out the installation of this time module okay it automatically comes installed with the python programming language so this time module which we have up in python it completely helps you to deal up with the time related functions and the task let's say you want to get what's the current time you can use a time uh, module with some sort of function let's you want to get up get the time in some other format let's say you want to get the the current time current seconds whatever are there and everything so all those particular things you can do with the time module okay now if you as well want to work out with the time stamps so on to that case as well this time module is having up a good range of functions and those as well help you to deal up with the time stamps as well okay so now on to that perspective case first of all i hope that you are pretty much clear with the uses of the time module that what are the uses so time module uh, in python programming language it helps you to deal up with the time related functions and the time related task next this module as well has up a good range of functions and that to help you to deal up with the time stamps okay um now what are the functions of the time module which you are having out actually so um the functions which you are having up in the time module the first one is time dot time okay now uh, the time which is written at the left side of the dot that's your module so it means that whenever you are using up any of the function related to the time module first of all it's necessary for you to use that time module then for that after that putting up a dot you write up your respective function which you want to use up from the time module this is how it actually works out okay so hope i am pretty much clear so this time function actually helps you to get up the current time whatever the current time is there it helps you to get that out next is time dot sleep what is the sleep function about actually so um let's say let's say you are having three printer statements with you you uh, as soon as you run up your program you want the output in such a format that as soon as you run out your program so first of all the first printer statement shall come as an output okay then moving further let's say after 30 seconds you want your second print statement to be printed and let's say after again 30 seconds you want your third print statement to be printed now uh you want you want the statements to be printed in some interval of time right now on to that particular case you use up this sleep function okay so now in that case whenever you want your statements so whenever you want your functions or anything like that to run in some sort of interval of time so now in that particular case you use up the sleep function next you have the c time so this the c time is as well it helps you to get up the current time whatever the current time you are having right away it helps you to get that out and next is your local time function so local time is one of the functions which as well it lets you know the time but that so uh in the format of the date of today the day of today the year what is the month going on what is the day going which is the week going every details you get up into this local time function okay so these are the some functions of the time module one will be learning a further in this particular tutorial only in this video only that's the strf so we'll be learning that about in a short while so i would not discuss that particular thing right here so hope i am pretty much clear regarding the time module once again i would let you know time module helps you uh, to deal with the time related functions and the task it as well has up a good range of functions which help you to deal up with the time stamps um then we are having different functions on to the time module some i have listed up here it's time sleep c time and the local time okay hope i'm pretty much clear with these all things okay so let's start out with the label function here let's understand now about the label function that what is it so um this label is a function which comes under the tick enter module only okay 
so whenever you want to use of the label function you 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 first of all have to import up the tkinter module and then only you could use up this label function now let's look upon that what are the parameters that you have to uh, you can actually put up in the label function now here the first parameter is your text let's say now here let's say that uh, you want to print out anything whenever you want to print out anything onto the tkinter window what do we do we use up the print statement right and simply your uh, whatever the statement has to be printed that that you get out as an output right now when you want to print out uh, any text onto the tkinter window then what you use you use up this text parameter see Printing up the text onto the uh, printing of some text onto the T kinder window, you have to use up a different label function, and inside that label function, you have to write up that text parameter, put up a equal to sign, and print in front of that you have to initialize that what text you want to be printed. Then only that you will be able to write up any text onto the T kinder window. It's not like that. You simply have used up the print statement and you write up anything, and that respective one will be written up onto your tkinter window. No, it's not like that. Right in the tkinter. Okay. So if you want to write up anything, so use up the text parameter. Now text variable. Whenever you want the user to give any input, into that case you have a text variable parameter. So first of all, what you do? First of all, you uh, make a variable and onto that assign the input from the user. Then further, you come inside your label function. There, you define up the text variable parameter, and simply you have the option for assigning up the variable into which the text variable is actually working about. Okay, that is the procedure. Now, if you want to underline up any text, so yeah, this underline is the parameter which is used. If you want to put up any image, so image is the parameter which is used. When you want to set up the background and the foreground, means Whenever you want to set out the background or the font color, so into that case you use up the BG, BG and the FG parameters. And let's say you are making up any box like that, and into that you want to set up a width. So onto that particular case, this width is the parameter that helps you to do so. Okay. So hope I am little much clear to you that regarding the label function. That what is it and how do you use that out actually? So in detail you'll be getting up as soon as we move towards the hands-on. So there in the hands-on you will be able to see out in a very clear manner that um, how does these things actually work around and how do you put up these particular things? Okay, hope I am clear with that. Let me take you forward towards my strf function. Now, what is this about? So, as I told you in the very starting only, that whenever you want to um, print up your respective time into some format, format means uh, like first of all you want the hours to be coming, then you want the minutes, then you want the seconds. So, onto that respective case, this strf function is a parameter which allows you to do so. Okay, so it means that it actually returns you out a string which represents the time and it is controlled by an explicit format string. Explicit format string means like I did put up this percent H, then I put up this colon, then I use percent M, then again I put up the colon, and then I use percent S. So, into this respective manner, these particular things actually work. So, this is what is called an explicit format string. So, Whenever you want to refer to the hours or minutes or seconds, so onto that respective case, you simply use round this strf function, strf time function. Okay, so uh, percent h or percent i represents up your hour, percent m represents up the minutes for you, percent s represents up the seconds, and this percent p represents the pm or the am, whatever the the Meridian you are having it okay it represents that out so this strf function in mainly helps you to achieve uh, it helps you to give out the uh, current particular time according to a format which is according to a r minutes and then seconds and even it displays if you use percent p then even it displays about a that it is pm or am okay 
So hope I am pretty much clear with this particular thing to you in regards that what's the use of this strf function and what's the format you use and rest everything. Right. Now here let's move on towards the demo. It means the practical implementation. So what I'll be doing is that I'll be taking you to my PyCharm IDE. And onto that PyCharm IDE we will be actually uh, implementing up all of these respective functions which we have learned. We'll be implementing up the modules which we have learned so far and with the help of implementation of these things we will be making out our digital clock so uh, when you do the implementation for these particular things you will be very much clear once again about these functions that what are these and how you could actually use them into your projects right so let's move on to the pycharm ide so here I am onto my PyCharm IDE and now further we'll be looking on uh, towards the hands-on for the digital clock Python project. Okay. So as already discussed up uh, into the slide deck with you people uh, that uh, we do not need the installation of any of the libraries which we are using up here into this particular project. So I won't be installing any of the libraries. Okay. As you want to use up the tkinter and the time module. So these are the both which come already installed with Python. So manually we do not need to install those out. Okay. So on to that particular case, I won't be installing out these things. Further, I'll be moving ahead and I'll be importing out my required libraries, my required modules, and then further moving ahead with the project. So what I'm going to do is that first of all, I'm going to import up the time module. Okay, I'm going to write up import. This is the importing up of my time module that uh, I'll be using this out right up here because I want to get the, uh, I'm making up a digital clock, right? And into that, into that one, I just want to get up the exact current time, whatever is right now. So, Onto that particular case, I want up this import time module. Okay, I'll be using up this prime module. Next, I'll be importing up that tkinter. So from tkinter, okay, tkinter, tkinter, right, one second. Right, so from tkinter, I'm going to import up the label first of all. Import, and here goes my label. That's my requirement which I actually want to import out from here. That from you can import the label. So label is my function uh, that I'll be using up here onto the tkinter. That's used for writing up anything onto the tkinter window. So right here I want to write up, I want to display up the current time onto the tkinter window. That's the reason I am using up here the label function. And next what I'm going to write up is that I'm going to write that from tkinter. From tkinter, I'm going to import up the asterisk. So what does this line actually means? This line means that from the tkinter library, I am importing up all of the respective functions which you have up here. Because I can use up any, uh, maybe there is some use of any respective function. So, so for that, I simply wrote up this particular line that from take into import all of my functions. These three were first of all my requirements, my importing of the libraries, whichever I, whichever are actually required into my project for going further. Right. So first of all was my time module because I want to display up the current time. Second was my tkinter, my label function, because I want to display that uh, time onto the tkinter window. So that could be done with the help of label function. And third, I was having the importing of asterisk. It means third, I was having the importing of all of my functions for the tkinter library. Okay. This was what the requirements we were having up here for this particular project. Now. Further, I'll be moving ahead and I'll be making up the tkinter window. And from that only, I'll be moving up with the rest of my things. Okay, so I'm going to get down here. So, my respective variable will be tk underscore window, which I'll be making up the tkinter window. You could define any of the respective variables according to your choice. Okay, here I wrote tk underscore window. 
so that's one of the variables into which i had stored up my teak inter window so further into my project wherever i'll be needing the use of my teak inter window i'll be using up this variable that is tk underscore window okay that's the complete idea regarding this particular thing which we are making it out here okay next if you want to set up any title so yeah you could do i could write up pk underscore window dot and i could use up the method which is title and inside that i could put up double inverted quotations and i could write up my respective title here let's say my title is my own digi clock Okay, my own digi. Okay, where is that clock? C L O. All uh, right here. So this is let's say my title which I wanted to put up here. My own digi clock. My own digital clock. Okay, this is the title of this respective uh, T K enter window which we are having. So T K underscore window is equal to T K and window dot title my own digi clock. Right, and further I'm going to write up here. Tk underscore window dot mean loop. Now, what is this? What mean loop about? This mean loop is about using this mean loop function means that uh, at this particular point, my program is getting completed. Now, in Tk inter, it is that whenever uh, you write up a project, uh, whenever you use up a Tk inter library, so always when your project is completed. The very last line of your pro program is main loop function. So if you do not add out the main loop function, so what will happen? You won't be able to see the output of your program, whatever the program you are having. You won't be able to see the output of that respective project, that respective program. So now in that respective case, I shall use up this main loop function. If there is any error into my program. Then it will throw the error. But if you do not have any error and you do not add this main loop function, so it won't display out the final program. It won't display out the final output to you. Okay. So hope I am pretty much clear with this particular thing to you about using the main loop. And always make sure that um, this main loop function will always be the very last of your function. Okay. It will always be the very last line of your complete program great uh, i could run up run out my program here once and i could just check out that uh, how come this output is coming for me so run and uh, i'll be getting up my output right up here into the respective and your window will appear see this is how the window looks like this one okay so here if i uh, like make this bigger so under that it is written my own digi clock. That was my respective title which I did mention it out, right? So I'll be minimizing that again. Great, fine. So I could just close this up because right away we hadn't given out any dimension or we haven't given out any background color. Anything like that is not done. So simply the by default the take inter window, however it looks, it is coming into that respective way only. Okay, that's pretty much done. Now further what I'm going to do is that I am going to make up out um, the label. I'm going to use of the label function and I'm going to set up the font and the font size, the font color, the font style, everything for my text which is going to appear onto my take enter window. Okay. Okay. So time underscore display my variable name. Okay. Now that I'm going to set up here into the label function. This is my label function because I want to display up the time onto my take enter window. And that's my reason I am using up this label function. Okay, label. And here we are having up, okay, here I'm, I'm going to put up tk underscore window because this is a variable which is storing up my take enter window. So onto that particular case, we have tk underscore window as a variable. Okay, now comma. Here we are having even having up the font as well. That what is the font which is to be put it upon here? So I want my font to be in the Arial. Okay, the size I'll be preferring is 145. Let's say I want that into the bold 
at even I want it into beta, it's phallic as well. Okay. So that's my label which is TK underscore window. And that's my TK inter window. My font is Arial. My size for that is 145. Then we are having bold and further we are having the italic as well for that respective font. Okay. That's the idea regarding this particular thing. Now next what I am left about giving up here. So I could set up a BG color. That's my background color. Let's say I want my background color to be light green. Okay. Uh, let's say I want my FG. That's my font color. The complete uh, full form is foreground. But we see that for the font color. And my, let's say my font color is black. Okay. Black. So, I did mention out that particular thing as well. So, right here what I did, I simply made up a variable that is time underscore display. And onto that, what did I use? I use up my label function which is used for displaying up any text onto the TK inter window. Further, I made TK underscore window variable. Uh, sorry, this was my variable which was having my TK inter window because I want to write up the things onto my TK inter window only, right? So into that particular case, uh, this tk underscore window variable was made into which I assigned up my tk inter window. So wherever I want to use up my tk inter window, I'll be using up the variable which is tk underscore window. Okay. Further, I want to set out a font here. So font is equal to the Arial. That's my font style. 145 is my font size. Bold is respective font and italic is as well the font style which I wanted to be put it up here. Further, I can give up a background color of my choice. Let's say that's the light green. So yeah, I did do so. Next, we're having the font color as black. Now, I want to put it onto the respective um, that uh, my tick into windows. Into that, I could use time underscore display dot pack. And I could put it out like this. Now. What is this path? This path is one of the function which puts up the written whatever the text you're having. It puts up that text onto the take enter window. Whenever you want to dis define up any uh, high, sorry, whenever you want to define up any X or Y values. Okay, whenever you are having any X or Y value. So into that particular case, you use up the function that's the place function. Okay. And whenever you are having uh, you whenever you want do not want to display or put up any x or y value simply you have the path function it means that it will display that row uh, into one single row so onto that particular case you use up the path function so for defining the dimensions you use the place function and for not defining the dimensions you use the path function okay so that's the reason I, I simply have to display up only the time that is the reason I haven't used up the place function because I have only one row to be displayed. That's my time. Other than that, I do not have anything to be mentioned it up there. Okay. Great. That's pretty much completed. Now, this is all set. We did meet up all of these particular things. Now, what is left out? Simply one thing is left out. That's my function which is to be made and that will display me the current time. Okay. Now, what I would do. I would get here. Let me make up a function. Uh, def. Okay. Uh, let's say my function name is def uh, time underscore current. Let's say this is my function name. That's time underscore current. Okay. Now into that time, first of all, what I'm going to do is that first, the very first step that I'll be writing up here is that I'll be applying out that in which format I want the time to be displayed onto the t kinter window let's say you want into the hour minute and second in that case you do let's say you want the time into minute hour and second then you do so accordingly it will help you to display up the time okay so now into that particular case i'll be using up here uh, let's say a as my variable and into that i'm going to use up now my time module because time will be the module which will help me to display up the current time and st okay where is that s s e r f time function right this we already discussed up onto the slide deck that what is this s t r f time about so it will help you to display up the current time 
right and i'm going to put up the double inverted quotation now what is the format in which you want let's say i want my uh time to be into the format of percent h that is my hours then comes my minutes then comes about my seconds okay h m is my min r my minute and my seconds and i'm going to keep them closer like like this one second right so this is uh, i want to display up my time into the r minutes and second this is how we do so further how we add up the am and pm that i would let you know in a short while okay that it's it's 8 in the am or it's 8 in the pm that i would let you know. fine now right here now what i'm going to use is that i'm going to use up that respective variable into which i have used up my label function what is that that is time underscore display because time underscore display is a respective function uh sorry time underscore display is a respective variable into which i have used about my label function and into which i wrote that what will be the font size of the time what will be the background color what will be the font color everything i wrote up there only right so that is the reason i'm using it out here but i'm going to use up the config function so this config function will be having up the text text is equal to and what it is going to do it is going to display up the time so my variable will be text is equal to uh, okay and i'm going to use up here a because a is the variable into which i use this time module and gave up the format for the time right that it's percent r minutes and the seconds format right that's the particular thing so on to that perspective case this is the thing which is done so time underscore display dot config and text which i wanted to mention up here is a right so i'm pretty much clear with this particular thing now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to get down here i'm again going to use up that time underscore display so time underscore display dot and here i'm having up the function uh, function which is after okay now why does this one second label yeah what is the use of this after function so this after is used that for after how many seconds you actually want up uh the, the time to be changed okay now the value will be here in the millisecond okay comma and here what you will be doing you will be calling up your function that's time underscore current but make sure that the brackets are not put it up here so this time underscore current function this function which you are having this function will be changed after every 200 milliseconds okay and what are you going to do after this pack function you simply have to call up the function into which you have written up about the complete idea regarding this particular function the so time underscore current that is the function which we have actually written out here right time underscore function is the uh, function into which all of our details regarding uh, displaying up of the time and what are the text to be written everything is displayed up here everything we have actually written it out here at this particular place right so hope i am pretty much clear with this particular thing to you that what is it about how how did we actually wrote it out now let me get here so what we did we imported up the time module i did mention of the reason but write it on to the practical implementation as well i hope you are pretty much able to see the reason for the importing of my time module because into that i wanted to display up my current time for displaying the current time we have a function which is strf time that strf time allows you it helps you to display up the correct time accordingly so into that respective case we use up this strf time now there was a use of using this strf time function and that was the reason we imported up the time module okay now as it is a gui project that's my graphical user interfaces so guis are put that up on using the tkinter library in the python programming language that was the reason we used up here this tkinter library if i haven't used this tkinter library then simply onto the console your output would have come about but we wanted to make it in a gui one so that was the reason i used up this tkinter library so with the 
help of tick enter library what we did we simply uh, first of all made out the tick enter window because whatever the output you are having for the tick enter window all of those respective outputs you get to see onto a new window that is a tick enter window which appears you will not be able to see any of your outputs onto the console because tick enter has its own interface so as soon as you make up the tick enter window automatically the tk interface opens about and then further you could write up the things with the help of label you could put the buttons with the help of button function further you are having many things for which you could do up there okay so yeah we made up the tick enter window then you could put up a title to your tick enter window so yeah we did so we did put up a title to our tick enter window which is my own digi now here at this particular place if you want to set out any background color so yes you could set out any respective background color also according to your choice for the tick enter window but right here on to this only as as i wanted to only and only display at that time i do not want any other things to be displayed upon so that was the reason i simply put out out my background color into my label function only otherwise simply uh, apart from that as well you could draw up tk underscore window dot config and into the background you could put up bg is equal to and you could set out any background color accordingly okay so hope i am pretty much clear with that further i made up a variable that's uh, time underscore display and i used out my label function using my label function helps me to write up anything onto my tick enter window as i wanted to write out that takes that is for my current time that what is my time right now so into that particular case i used up this label function inside that we have to pass on the variable for onto which we have stored out our tick enter window for me that variable was tk underscore window so i simply passed on this tk underscore window variable inside my label function i defined out my respective fonts let's say that for arial my font is size i wanted up the size to be 145 that depends on you whatever you want you can put it accordingly i wanted 45 so i did next you are having up the bold and then you are even having up the italics further you are having up the background color which is a light green and Uh, font color. I wanted to put it up into the black. Then I simply use up the pack function with the time underscore display because I do not want to mention up any row or column because I have only one thing to display. That's my time. Other than that, if I was having some more things to be displayed upon, then into that particular case, I had used up my place function p l a c e. Okay. But I didn't wanted to mention up any respectively row or any respective column, or I didn't want to mention up any respective x or y values. So that was the reason I didn't use up this pack function. Uh, sorry, I didn't use up that place function, right? And we were having up the main loop function. So whenever you are using up the tick enter library and you want to see up the outputs, so into that case, it's for sure that you have to use up the main loop function. without the main loop you won't be able to see your final output of the program okay so hope i am clear and here we simply use up the things so i use up the config function to write up the text onto my time underscore display and my time underscore display was having my label function and now is the time for running out our project so i'm going to click on run here now let's see what's going to appear up as an output for us so here we are having it's 19 that's Eight. Sorry, that's seven, right? Here we are having it's forty minutes, and seconds are continuously moving and increasing accordingly, right? So it's seven forty and thirty nine, then forty. This much of seconds, right? So yeah, that's pretty much clear, right? Now instead of this, if I let's say want AM or PM as well, I could put a one more percent sign, and I could write up here P. that will help me to display the pm or am and instead of h okay let me first write this okay okay and i could even leave up some space between these dots also like this now let's run out our project once again and this time i'm going to change up the background color as well let's make it as light blue okay let's run that out and okay i could make up some font size as well a little bigger let's say it's 155 i guess that's going to work out Let's run it out here. So yeah, 
Here you are having a few once again, your outputs, and now this time you are able to see it's AMR PM. So right away it's PM. Yes, it's right, right away it's um, 741 this much of seconds and according to AMR PM it's P. that's in the evening. Okay, here I'm having my title, my own digi clock. Now I guess you noticed uh, one thing that the size of this tick in the window is automatically adjusted by the time. Right, so yes, this happens that the size automatically, if you are not mentioning up any size of the tick inter window, like if you're not mentioning any length and width of the tick inter window, then whatever the text you are writing and whatever the font size is of the text, accordingly the tick inter window gets adjusted. So, on to that respective case, if you are having some one or two things only to be displayed upon to the tick in the window, so there is no such need for mentioning of the um, text or mentioning of the uh, dimensions of to the tick in the window. It automatically adjusts those accordingly. Now, let's say here it's coming up 19. Let's say I want that into numerical format of, uh, let's say it's 7 or 8. I do not want into this uh, 19 and things like that. So what could I do? Here, when I wrote up H, instead of that, you could write up here I. Okay, and getting down here, I would once again change up the background color. Let's say this time I wanted to make it to pink. And what I would do, I would uh, like do them right away as they were because uh, when they were closer, then it was looking more uh, readable and more good, right? So now have a look that here, what did I got? I got here 7. So whenever you want the terms into this numerical formats from 1 up till 9 or 1 up till 12, then in that case, you simply use up I here. Uh, here at this particular place in the STRF time, use percent %I. When you want into the R, let's say uh, after 12, you want into 13, then 14, then 15 moving forward, then you use up here the H, that is the R, okay? So right away. It's 7.43, this much number of seconds, and it's this much PM right here. Okay, it's, it's PM actually. So now if you have checked about this time into the somewhat in the morning, so it would have displayed instead of PM, it would have displayed you, displayed you the AM. So accordingly, the, the minutes as well change. I just like here, let's say it's 57, it's 58 seconds, 59, 60. So not 60, that was zero. So here the my minutes as well changed about like this. Now, one more thing to mention it out to you, that let's say if I change up the thing, let's say here my comes minutes, then here come my R, then we are having seconds. Now let's run that out here and have a look. See, minutes are there, in the middle I'm having R, and then I am having up the seconds. So many times it happens, right, that somewhat the, the format for the time is uh, like changed as well. So into that case, you could change that according to your sake of easiness. If you want minutes in the starting, you could put that out if you want hours in the starting. You could put that out. If you even want the seconds in the starting, then as well you could put that accordingly. Okay, now I'm going to make this as it was. It was uh, right here. Yeah, it was right here I. And at this particular place, it was M. That were my minutes. Okay, and now finally I'm going to display, display out my output once right here. Okay, so right here that's my output. My time, my time in the hours, 10 minutes and the seconds here and it's it's p.m. actually. It's uh, 7 p.m. in the evening. That's why this bring me out the p.m. I'm going to close that out. Right. So, hope you got up the idea that how you could make up a digital clock with the help of Python programming language and that's so in the GUI format. I don't think so. It was that much difficult because some 15 to 20 lines of code is actually written up and the main code is only and only of three lines which is actually written up here at this particular place. Nothing more than that is actually needed, simply the one function of strf time. Nothing more than that is needed to make up a digital clock. Then we added up some tkinter, some, some functions into that, that makes it at our GUI library. So I hope I'm pretty much clear with this particular thing to you. So into this particular tutorial, you'll be learning about converting the video to GIF. Which you can be of any respective sort, you take it mp3, you take it mp4, whatever the video format you want to use, you can use that out. And we'll be converting any video of any format into a GIF format. That's a respective tutorial which is going to be about.
so many a times you must be fascinated after seeing up so many gis present onto the internet you must even be thoughting is thinking about that how are these gifs made and how you do up these respective things so it's pretty much cool that yes you can do about all of these particular things with the help of python programming language so into this particular tutorial of today i'll be telling you how you can convert a video to gif format with the help of python programming language this is the tutorial about now let me take you forward towards the agenda that we are going to follow up for this particular tutorial so first of all i'll be taking you through the libraries i'll be in particular using only one library for the converting of my any of the video format to the gif format video simple one library is used and that is movie py library py stands for python and movie is the respective library name so it's movie py library okay i'll be first of all letting you know that what is this library about what are the features that you have in what is the process for installation do we need installation or we do not need installation each and everything i'll be covering up here into this movie py library first of all further to the next i'll be taking you towards a function that will be using up into our project we'll be discussing about the video file clip function this is one of the function which will help you to convert your gif but how will it help and what are the parameters that you have to pass in and this respective function belongs to which library what are the features of this each and everything will be discussing up in detail in the further tutorial and then i'll be taking you to the demo that's the practical implementation of our converting any video format to the gif video format okay so hope i am pretty much clear that what's the agenda for this particular tutorial that we are having up here so let me take you to the very first topic now and that's movie by library first of all we'll be discussing about this in the detail about this particular library so what is this library about first of all so this library was actually developed for the video editing process whenever you want to do up some video editing into that particular case this movie py library this movie by python library was developed now what sort of video editing you could do you can concatenate any videos you could uh, simply cut a part of that respective video you can insert some title onto the video you can simply do the video processing you can create some custom effects so these are all of the respective things which you can do with the help of this movie py library okay so now what are the python versions which this respective library uh, actually deals with so your python shall be uh, 2.7 or above than that but the preferable one which i would let you know will be above 3.4 okay so make sure that your python version is above 3.4 and if it is not then upgrade it to a newer version the current version which is there and or either you you do not need know how to upgrade that out so simply you could uninstall python and again install the newest version of python onto your device okay so hope i am pretty much clear with this particular thing now whenever you want to do some sort of editing like whenever you want to add up some custom effects whenever you want to do some um, i would say video processing whenever you want to concatenate two videos concatenate means the merge of the videos okay let's say you are having two different different videos and you want to merge them about so that's mentioned up here as concatenation so when you want to do concatenation you want to insert up some title so whatever the simple tasks are there which are related to video editing if you want to do any of those so this movie py library is one of the ones which is completely preferred in all of these particular cases 
Next, one more feature we are having up here of the MoviePy library and that feature is only the reason that why we will be using this MoviePy library into our practical implementation of this Python project. So the reason is that this MoviePy library also allows you to read and write the most common audio and video formats which includes the GIFs as well. Okay, you could read, you could write, all of these operations you could perform with the help of the movie file library in all of the video formats and the GIF format is as well included. So that's the first reason why are we using up this movie file library into our project of today. What's the main task, what's the goal of the project that we want to convert? any video format mp4 mp3 whatever to the gif format right so on to that particular case what will be my very first step my very first step is gonna be that i have to first of all read my complete file which i want to convert right let's say i'm having any mp4 file with me now i have to read out that respective file and i want to can i have to first of all read that out so whenever you want to convert a file into any other file format it's especially not for gia for nothing other than that but it's a simple uh, thing which i'm telling you a common thing that whenever you want to simply convert any file into one format to the other format so on to that particular case the very first step is that you have to read that file Okay, and MoviePy library allows you to read any type of file formats. That's the reason that we are using up this MoviePy library into our practical implementation of our project for converting the video to GIF. Okay, so hope I am pretty much clear with this particular thing, the reason for using this MoviePy library. Now. I did already mentioned up that uh, make sure to have a, a Python version greater than 3.4. Okay. Next. What's the installation process? So for the installation, you simply have a, a command that's pip install movie pi. Okay. I'll be showing you the practical implementation for the installing of the library as well. But here for your knowledge, I'm letting you know that the command for the installation of this MoviePy library is pip install MoviePy. Okay, so hope I am pretty much clear to you regarding this MoviePy library that what's, what is this? What is it especially used for? What are the features of this? why are we using that into our project of today and the process for installation hope i am pretty much clear with all of these respective things let me take you to the next topic of our discussion and that's the video file clip function okay let me tell you one thing regarding this function that this function is a part of the movie pi library only right a few seconds before we learned about the movie file library right so this movie file library this video file clip function is a part of the movie file library okay so first of all if you have to use this video file clip function so the very first thing you will be that you have to import the movie file library further you could use up this function according to your sake of easiness okay now i'll be discussing about this so video file clip function allows you to convert the video into any other format let's say you want to convert any mp4 video to gif so video file clip function allows you to do so okay now further i'll be discussing up about the parameters that what the parameters are to have up here um, for this respective function okay let's discuss about the parameters so first of all you have to the file name so whatever the file name you are having which you want to actually convert into gif so you could put that out we, uh, okay now if you're simply putting up the file name so onto that particular case 
make sure that you are even mentioning up the extension extension means that what is your file format it's mp3 it's mp4 what is it okay mention that out as well with the file name second is that if you want to put up the path of that particular so yes you can do do so as well you can put up the path of any respective file accordingly so any of the ways folks you put up the file path or simply you put up the file name any of the options are going to work for this particular parameter okay next you have has underscore mask now this is actually uh, we said that as true only if you have a mask which is included into your video file okay next you have the audio so we state this audio as false if your clip if your video file doesn't have any audio okay or simply if you do not wish to read the audio so on to that particular case you set up this audio as false okay i would again repeat you set up this audio parameter as false if your video clip which you are having it doesn't has any audio or if you do not wish to read the audio okay into that case you set up this audio as false next you are having up the target resolution so you could put up a frame you could put up the resolution you could put up the desired height and the desired width according to your choice for whatever you want the video clip length and width to be okay you can put that accordingly next you are having the resize algorithm so what are the algorithm is there if you want to resize that out so you could resize but by default the algorithm which is there is by cubic okay so by by cubic is the by default algorithm which is there and next you are having fps source so whenever you want to collect from the metadata so into that case you use this fps source parameter now from these parameters there are two three parameters which is are specially used out first one is your file name second is your audio these two are the ones which are mostly and commonly used when you are using this video file clip function hope i am pretty much clear with this to you now this is a function this is a method so it doesn't need out any of the installation as soon as you install the movie file library all these functions automatically comes up and you can use any of the required functions according to your need okay so it doesn't need any installation parameters i had already mentioned up to you that what are the parameters and what are the commonly used one okay so here we are on to the pycharm ide and further i'll be writing up my code and showing you the import and installation everything on to my oh, pycharm oh. ide only okay now this one thing which i wanted to refer out to you uh like you can use any of the ides according to your choice you want to use uh, let's say visual studio code you want to use jupyter notebook or uh, you want to use a spider anything you can use according to your choice but my recommendation to you will be that do not use any of the online ides because now into this particular what you should have you should have a video with you of any format which you actually want to convert up into the gif right so that respective video shall be present in the same folder into which your python file is present and inside which you are writing up your project correct so now on to that particular case it's very much important for you to have up a look over these particular things and this particular thing that it can't actually be done on to the online ides that's the reason i am like suggesting you to use up any of the offline ide according to your sake of convenience okay now what i'll be doing is that uh i am using pycharm so on to the pycharm only i have the terminal and that i can use of that terminal for the installation of my respective libraries 
so i'll be going back or going on to this particular terminal here and um, from this terminal what i could do is that i could simply install up the libraries so command for the installing of my movie pi library is pip install movie p y okay this is the command that you have to use out after writing that command hit out the enter now what it will do it will install up this particular library for you it would take up some time depending upon your internet bandwidth and it will do that out but for me the requirement is already satisfied because i have already installed that onto my device so it is showing me requirement already satisfied but if you haven't done that particular thing till now so it will take up some time for you and after some time at last it will show you that successfully installed okay so what i would do is that i would zoom in a little and i would write up the command here as well so that you if you want you could re, uh, like refer that out so pip install movie pi py one single p and one single y okay p is not going to be capital everything is in small only okay pretty fine hope i am pretty much clear with this particular thing to you now further getting down i'll be importing up my library that we install right away that movie okay so i'll be writing up here that from from movie pi dot editor from movie pi dot uh, editor i'm going to import up the asterisk what's the first line which i have written what's the meaning of that so movie pi is my library that we all are pretty much aware of right i just did mention up this thing a few minutes before as well that we just installed out this movie pi library now what we are actually willing to do we are actually willing to convert up a mp4 format um, video clip onto a gif format video clip right we are doing up this particular thing so now onto that simple case i simply used up this movie pi dot editor as well okay i used up this movie pi dot editor so this movie pi dot editor will actually help me to do up this particular things okay and now when i wrote import asterisk so it means that i'm going to import up all of the functions which we have up into this movie pi dot editor file okay so when i wrote up here movie pi dot editor import asterisk so import asterisk is simply means that from my movie pi dot editor library i'll be importing up all of the required functions which i have a present up into this particular library because i need those functions because i now it it simply a tedious task for you to again and again write import this function or import that function so at one simple go you imported up all of your relevant functions which you are having up here now further you can use out any respective function of your choice here let me get down so now here i'll be making up a variable which is convert underscore video underscore name so what will this variable actually store this variable will store the name of the video clip which you want to convert into gif okay i will be using up here the mp4 format okay you can prefer any of the uh, any of your choice so simply i'll be writing up here video file okay that will be a file clip okay video file clip this is will be my respective function name and that function i am actually i have imported it from movie pi dot editor library only so this video file clip i did mention about this function a little bit time to before to you about this that what is it actually how is it used and what are the things that you are having up here okay so video file clip right that's that now into the bracket you'll be writing up that particular file name which you want to convert so i'm having up some mp4 file formats i want to convert up that mp4 file format but that particular thing i'll be writing up uh, after the completion of my program okay now let's get down now again i'm going to use up here convert underscore video underscore name okay but here we'll be having write underscore g i 
f okay right hand is called gif what is this about so convert video name this is respective is your variable right and what's this right hand is called gif so this right hand is called gif is respectively a function which will help you to write up your mp4 file format into the gif file format okay this is the use of this particular a uh, right underscore gif function so with this i simply used up this convert video name uh, variable here the reason is that because this convert video name variable this is the one which is storing my file which i want to convert into gif format right because it is a variable that is a storing that uh, which respective uh, what format of file and which respective file actually i want to convert it into the particular gif format so now on to that particular case you can simply use this out right so um, this video clip file function will store the name for your file name for your uh, file format which you want to convert and this right underscore gif will actually store the like it it will actually convert up the file for you and you have to give up the name according to your choice as well that in what's the name for that respective uh, file in which you want to convert that mp4 to gif format okay so hope i am pretty much clear with this particular thing first of all to you that what are these functions about and how do you write up these particular things now for the what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write up my video file name which i'm having up now one thing to make sure is that that particular video shall be present into the same folder where your python file is actually stored okay for sure it should be there it should be onto that particular folder i would like to repeat it shall be onto that particular folder into which your python file is saved right you shall have the python file in which you're writing the code and your uh, video clips which you want to convert into gif in the similar folder in the same folder okay so hope i am pretty much clear with this particular thing to you regarding writing of the program now further we'll be going ahead and we'll be writing up the names of our file and further we'll be converting that and checking up the final output of this particular project i hope that up till this particular place i am pretty much clear to you uh, regarding a complete code whatever we had written up till now right now what's my last task uh, for this hands on for this video to gif project is that i have to put up my uh, video file name and give up a name that in which name i want my gif file to be created and then we'll be running out our program and waiting up for some time because it depends that um, what's the duration of that a particular video which you are creating okay it might take out some time if you are using a very big video for converting a video to gif okay it might take out so now what i will be doing up here is that i will be going on to the desktop of um, my laptop okay now here on to the desktop i am having up some few files like like i hope you are able to see this file and this respective one as well okay let's check out that what's the uh, properties of these files okay so if i go on to the properties so see i am having this mp4 file format right now what i would do very first of all is that first of all uh, i'll be copying up these particular files and i'll be putting those on to the location where exactly these are to be now what i just meant out from this particular thing let me tell you so um there is a location into which your python file is saved in which you are writing the project right i i hope that you must have that location with you into which you are writing into the file uh in which you're writing up your python code and that particular file is saved up at some location some path into your uh, laptop right so uh i have to save up those mp4 files onto the same path where my uh python file is being saved into which i am writing up this code for video to gif conversion okay as in the very starting only 
I suggested you and I told you to have a PAR MP4 file format. So I hope that up to this particular point, you must be pretty much ready with your MP4 files. Right now, let I'll be telling you that how to put this uh, file onto the location and from where to find out the location. So let's say this this uh, this lang dot p1. This is my file into which I am writing up my code. Okay, I would click on that and I would do the right click. Okay, now right click, I would go and go here onto the copy. From here, you can just uh, click on copy path and it will let you know exactly that where your file is actually saved. Okay, so you could find it out from here. Now, for me, I am already aware that where this particular file of me, that is lang.py, in which respective uh, window, in which respective place is saved. Okay, so what I would do, let me open up that desktop once again. Uh, let's say first of all, I'm going to convert this video. It is a, it's a very short video of 26 seconds and that's from Great Learning itself. Okay, and the video is AI ML Trends in 2022. So let's copy this out from here. I'm going to copy this out video. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on the respective destination. So it's Windows C. For me, then it's users, it's user. And then I'm having PyCharm project in the inside that here is my respective destination. Okay. And um, great. So I could just do out and minimize out the things a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty fine. And I'm going to do control plus V. So have a look at this here AI ML trends in 2022. This file has actually came here onto this particular location for me. I'm going to once again check out the properties. Let me show you about this. Name is AI ML 2022. The type of file format is MP4 file. Okay. And uh, further, it is of 26 seconds. So that I would have, I will show you, go on to details. And from here, you'll be able to know that, okay, the length is of 26 seconds. Okay. Right away, I'll be showing you three uh, demonstrations for the particular output. Now, let me first show you what is this actually about and uh, how does this actually particular file looks like. So, it will Yes, so this was somewhat the file which is looking I didn't have show you, shown you the complete video, but yeah, this is how this particular file looks like. Okay, it's a very short video from Great Learning itself. So now this one has been done. I would do the same thing for my next two videos as well. So this AI is done. Now we'll be uh, doing this for um, most in demand data science carriers in 2022 with the salary. Okay, so let's copy this out video very quickly. And I'm going to go on to my respective uh, destination that's Windows C and then users. Here I'm having the users and my PyCharm projects, and here it is my folder. And I'm going to do Ctrl plus V once again. So, see, here it came most in demand data science carriers in 2022 with salary. Let's check the properties for this now. So, here it goes. Okay, let me bring it out here. Great, so yeah, it's again MP4 file name. I did already told you most in demand data science carriers in 2022 with salary and uh, details. It is of 28 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna click on okay and I could just run this out as well and one show you that what is this and how does this video actually looks out. Great, yeah, I hope that you are pretty much uh, aware of this particular video itself. That how is it looking? And uh, where's my third one? I'm having one more that's most uh, in demand digital marketing carriers in 2022 with salary. Okay, this one. Let's copy that out very quickly once again here. And I'm going to take you to the downside into the user. And here's my PyCharm projects. And here's my respective folder. And I'm going to paste out the file here. So, yes, here we are having. Let me open up the properties for this and let's have a look over there. So, right away. So yeah, it's again an MP4 file. Name is most in demand digital marketing carriers in 2022 with salary. And here are the details. It's of 16 seconds. Okay, great. So yes, this is, these are all my three videos which I wanted. I'm going to go on to the spy charm. And now when you're going to check out here, you'll be getting all these three videos into the spy charm folder into which my file is getting saved. Okay, so let's check it for M. Right here, you're having most in demand data science carriers, most in demand digital marketing carriers, and there shall be some AI ML. Here it is AI ML trends in 2022. 
okay great so yeah all of these files have been done what i'm going to do is that first of all i'm going to do the very short one that's in most in demand digital marketing carriers in 2022 with salary okay let's do that out so here into this particular i'm going to put up that particular file name okay i'm going to put up the file name yes see as i simply wrote most uh, mo so it's giving me the options i'm going to do it for digital marketing one okay because that's the most shorter video which we are having so we can do so yeah right away here i did put up the name most in demand digital marketing carriers in 2022 with salary dot mp4 okay make sure that you have to put up the uh, file name with the extension as well extension means that like it is dot mp4 so yeah you have to do out the same as well you have to put out dot mp4 okay that's done here inside this write underscore gif function i did told you that into this you are going to write up the name that what will be your gif name into which the above mentioned video will be converted into the gif okay so i am going to do it for gl underscore gif1 my file name okay so into this respective manner you could give up your file name gl underscore gif1 right so hope i'm pretty much clear with that yes dot and what will be the file format file format will be dot gif so i have to mention that also gl underscore gif1 dot gif okay this is how you have to do and yeah that's all over it's a time for running out our project so let's click on run here and after that i would explain you things once again till the time it will take up some time for the conversion then i would explain okay so yes here it's actually getting up converted okay it's it's getting up converted as soon as it is being converted actually it would show you that process uh, executed with this much number of time seconds okay now uh up till that particular time i could once again give you an overview that what has been done up here up till this particular place right so as told by the slide deck to you that movie pi library was is actually helping us to do up all of these particular things it helps you to convert up any respective file into any other respective file format let's say here we were converting the mp4 so yes in that particular place mp4 is getting converted onto the gif format right so that's what is done up here by the file now just have a look at here what it is doing it started building uh, file gl underscore gif one dot gif okay with image io right and now see it is showing you the percent as well that how much time it's gonna take for converting up your file and how much percent is done and all those particular things it is gonna take up the time right so till the time I, I could explain you that what the things we did do and further we can move with the rest of the things so um here yes I was talking about that what I was being done up here. So this this respective file which we are having most in demand digital marketing carriers with salary that was our MP file. So this movie pie uh, library movie pie dot editor which we are having up here into the Python programming language that's actually helping me to convert up this particular file into the uh, GIF format. Right. So into this we are having some functions. and with the help of those particular functions only it is helping me to convert up any of my file formats into my gif file okay so what could be done up here is that i am having up here like um, my mp4 file versus most in demand digital marketing carriers right now that particular file which we were having up here that was an mp4 file i want to i i just first of all wanted that file that video file names to be put it up here so that we get an idea that which is the file which you want to convert right so what i did inside my video file clip function i did wrote up the name with my file format guys make sure that here you are as well writing up your file format because that's the most necessary thing that you have to do if you are not doing that out it might lead you to some a uh, wrong output okay so make sure that you are um, actually putting up the uh, file name with the extension so i did so and i saved that particular thing onto our respective variable 
Now, after getting saved onto that respective variable name, what is being done up here is that we are converting with the right underscore GIF function. We are simply converting this GIF, this uh, respective one into the GIF. Okay, that's pretty much done. Now, what I'm going to do is that, uh, see here, now process finished with exit code 0. It means that my file has been converted. How do I check that out now? So, go on to the same location. This is my location. What was my file name? My file name was gl underscore gif1. Let me zoom in. Uh, where's that gone? Right away here, right here. Okay, I just let me copy that out. Let me copy it out. Uh, let me paste it over my desktop here once. Great. And now it's my file which has been converted. I'm going to do out like this and I'm going to go on to the properties for checking that out. What's that? That's the now type of my file is GIF. Let me open this out and uh, one second. Here, let me take it out. Right. What's my file name? My file name is GIF, dot GIF file. Right. So, name, name for my file is dot GIF. And that dimensions are already mentioned it up here. Now, why it is not showing me any duration? Why it's not showing me out? Because it's a GIF file. GIF files do not have the duration because they continue, they keep on uh, again and again, again and again, they keep on repeating that out. Right? So that's the reason that right away here, my GIF file is not getting up, opened up like this. Uh, sorry, I'm not getting up any duration for my GIF file. So item type is a GIF file. Right? Dimensions are the same dimensions which were actually of my respective um, file dimensions won't change out. Nothing will change out actually. Okay. Nothing will change out. It will remain as it is. Okay. So hope I am pretty much clear with that particular thing to you that um, how is this actually converted up here. Right. Hope I am clear with that particular thing. Now, I will be, uh, what I will be doing is that I would go on to that particular destination here. Where is that file? And I am going to do the double click onto this file. So, right away, right? So, just let me do a one simple. Let me close this out from now. Great. And now, I'll be, I could just actually, now when you have to open up this GIF file, you are going to do the right click. And after that, you are going to open that out with your respective video file format whatever is uh, available for you at that particular place okay great so yeah hope i am pretty much clear with that particular thing to you uh, for converting this onto a gif file right so whatever the whatever um, respective apps or things are there which support up the gif files uh, and into which you can run up the gif files you could pretty much clear simply convert that into a and run that for a gif file right so this pretty much thing is clear to you next what i'm going to do is that i'm going to uh, change up the name for my file okay i would change up the name and i would show you one more let's do it for ai slash ml okay and here i'm going to keep it the name as two okay and now this time i'm going to run out this particular project so now again, it's going to take up some time for the conversion of uh, this, this respective MP4 file to the GIF format file. It's again going to take up some time for the conversion of this. Okay. So now further, let's start that out uh, very quickly here. Like it will start in a short while. The conversion will start up in a short while because it depends on the video length also. Now this AI ML twins, this respective file was of 20, uh, 28 or 26 seconds, right? So now see, it started up the building up of my GIF file here, right? It is started out. So now it will take up some time and it will convert this particular file for the GIF format here. Okay, it will take up some time and it will simply convert that out. So up to that particular point, I hope I'm pretty much clear with these all of the things to you that um, how are these things done and how do these things actually take place? What are the what are the ways where we can actually use this out and how do you simply convert up any respective file format to a GIA file? Okay, I, I had just shifted that down because it's actually doing up its particular things. Great. So uh only not MB4 file only, but yeah, rather than this as well, you could use up some more um 
with your commands and according to you according to your convenience you can convert up any respective video format to the g i f Format. So this is how you can make up a project. You can do the hands-on for the video to GIF. Now it's not that much difficult, right? You are having three to four lines of code simply here to be written down. Nothing more than that, right? So into that respective case, it does up the things into the same respective manner. But make sure that you are opening up your files from that perspective app or from that perspective or software which supports the running up of to the GIF files. Okay, because GIF we all know that GIF first of all your file will run and again it will start running, it will start running, it will start running. It will not stop at that particular place like it doesn't have any ending time. Right, GIF file do not have any ending time. They keep on running and running and running and running every time whatever the time you are having. So, make sure that you're opening up the files into a that respective um uh, like software which is act which actually supports up the uh file format of the gif files right so as soon as the respective uh, file format has been converted the mp4 has been converted to the gif we can check that out onto our respective folder but yeah here only one thing is uh, important and that's key you have to make sure that the file format like video which you're having that video is actually saved onto the same folder where your file is getting saved the file into which you're writing the program this respective file is getting saved at whatever the place in the same place only your video file shall be present otherwise it won't give you the output it will show the location errors okay and yes here i guess my file has been converted yes it has been i would go on to this particular let me close this one okay this has been done and yeah here is my location yeah it's glgif2 and i'm gonna do up this out i'm gonna click on the properties and yes now it's my gif file dot gif okay and here you can change it with the respective um location with which you want to open that out and yeah you could do say accordingly it's not any case right you can open it with anything i'm gonna close this out from here okay and i'm gonna go and click on the details so yeah for the details as well here it's absolutely same it's the item type is gif file and that's the respective folder where file is and everything is written up here. and dimensions are as well the same which we did give out right great so yeah hope i'm pretty much clear with this particular thing about converting up a gif file so i can put converting up a mp4 file to a gif file that's how you could do up the things if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.